You're watching Suck Professor. Hello, everybody. It's me, Hank. I'm joined by... James. James! Welcome to our show, everybody. Westworld shot-by-shot -shot breakdown. We've got hundreds of screenshots and thousands of comments and one unifying theory that will explain everything, but we'll, re we'll reveal that at the end. Welcome to the show. I don't have that. <laughs> I mean, it's called a tease, James. Oh. Come on, go to. It's called a watch, lie. Watch the local news, you jerk. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, welcome to the show, guys. What's what, we just watched episode eight of season two called mm -hmm. Kiksuya. Kiksuya, <laughs> which I'm sure I'm pronounced wrong. Yes, it's Lakota and, language, and it means remember. Well, we got to say it slow, so it means remember. Now that's okay. the extent of the commentary about the pace of the language. I'm sure that's mm -hmm. a, a topic of discussion among everybody. Uh, I actually found the uh, slower speaking cadence quite um, yeah. kind of comforting. I, I, I kind of wish I wouldn't talk there so was, fast. There was definitely a beauty in this episode. It was very well done, but mm -hmm. it, the, there's not an entirely lot to digest. This was not, yeah, this was not a big buffet. This was no. kind of like a one uh, boar on a, on a spit and we're just going to <laughs> peel the skin back and get out those or organs and offal and mm -hmm. put our thumbs in the no. eyes and yeah it's gonna be a good what one better time to do it than now Let's exactly it. so uh, just real quick guys uh the twitter you can follow james on video james sp me at, 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 <laughs> i suck at this at suck professor patreon is also available we do a podcast where we actually pick out youtube comments from our westworld discussions that are going on here we talk about it in more detail on there uh it's also a great way to help support the channel and uh, encourage us to keep making this uh Magnificent content. <laughs> um, and um, this kind of, for new people, this is a, sort of a, a podcast with pictures. We will, we might go off topic occasionally. I just want to give everybody a fair warning that that will, um, um, could be upsetting. So, um, mm -hmm. is that said, I'm excited. I got a seltzer water. James has a Coca-Cola classic in a, in a bottle because we live live near, you got an old it's bottle type? Mexican, Mexican yeah, Coke. The Mexican Coke. The, the good, real thing. The good stuff. And uh, let's get to it. First, James, let's do a hi but I want to do it in Lakota. Ready? Kiksuya! Uh, uh. Kiksuya! <laughs> okay, first thing, James, this is just quick. They had a little uh, interesting descriptor here on the HBO page. I thought that was interesting. That, so it's mi kante ki yu ha ya ye. That sounded pretty good. Mm -hmm. Take a mark when you go. And that is yeah. a very, very, very important S message in this episode, which we'll get into later. Into later, as the man likes to say. Mm -hmm. So, all right, first screenshot for real. We open on a dirty, gross thing, uh, ground. It's not really gross. The thumb is the, this is a right. bloody hand. We've got a bloody old hand. Right, Everybody so. knew this was the man in black. Yeah, this becomes very apparent. My whole theory going into this episode was that he clearly took a mortal wound. He was shot in the chest. You don't yeah. come back from that kind of thing. He's taken shots before, but never anything in this critical of a spot so yeah. i'm assuming during the beginning of the episode is that he's going to be found by emily emily's going to drag him back to some sort of console he's going to download his mind into a computer and perhaps he will exist and confront ford inside the cradle universe even yes. though the cradle's been destroyed i assume there's another portal into that area and right. that becomes the door that he's looking for that was my thought going into it Same here. didn't turn out to be correct but we did get some more interesting stuff so yes. let's uh, i think well everybody was on the edge of their seat about what what would happen to him it doesn't seem like he's going to survive so where does his soul go? They're just not going to yep. let him keel over and die. So right. I was actually hoping that they would upload him into his daughter's brain. Yeah. And then he has to relive the experiences of her having a carnal intercourse with um, strapping men. Yes. And then it'll be like man in black that he has stopped responding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. All right. Um, all right. So there he is. He crawls over to the river. I, I think if I were to die, I'd take to die with, near the water. Just so the crabs can get have easier access to you. Yes. Yes. I've always thought the my, desert crabs. Yes. Yes. The <laughs> <laughs> those those well-known desert crabs yeah. um which by the way if you go to vegas you can easily get no i'm sure yeah well oh, god guys go, little vegas tip get your insurance Ugh, god, i'm still paying that fucking bill off all right um don't do it don't he's talking to himself here he's basically yeah, he's like, talking to his it. own mortal beating heart don't yes. stop it I mean, don't don't stop. Don't stop. Believe in. Believe, yeah. yeah um, be, hold be, on. Be eaten. Yeah. So he yeah. basically said that he is not going to allow himself to die in this world until he beats the world, finds the door, solves the maze, does the puzzle, does all mm -hmm. the kind of stuff. He is not going to die in this location. Now, when will you accept death if it's knocking on your face? Oh, in the next five minutes. Oh, all right. Yeah. Good. Glad thing I put on my knocking gloves. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, I, I think when it's my turn, if I'm old, I will be more eager. But even yeah. then, I'll, I'll just kind of you know be like oh good now we don't have to retire yeah i'd be like oh sweet vacation <laughs> vacation yeah i'm going back to where i came from nope. oblivion nowhere mm -hmm. uh all right so anyway by the way actors when they get their face in the dirt i wonder if they get paid more 
Mm, or that's just probably how not. Yeah. There's a minimum guarantee in your contracts on a per episodic basis, so I don't think that would be the case. Whoa, quit with the lingo there. Okay, there, accountant boy. Um, mm-hmm. So the horse guy comes up now. So the Lakota Ghost Nation guy. Yeah. I did not expect to see this character here. There's just been this running theme that the Lakota Nation, the Ghost Nation is being controlled at the behest of Dr. Ford. We don't know their true intentions. We don't know anything about them, really, from the backstory. They're the, the one mysterious aspect still floating around in Westworld. Well, not the so, one. I mean, yeah. Well, the biggest one, yeah, I would say. Very large one. but Yeah, so sorry. it's it's kind of cool to see him here. Yeah, so that's what th- this episode dials into them, finally. So we actually get a lot of backstory and a lot of that. Do you uh, think he paints himself to match the horse? Well, I, I think he paints the horse to match himself. Because, well, I, I imagine the horse is face is brown but then look he got red on the horse's face kind of like him and uh well the horse's body is white so he paints his body white oh you're saying he modeled his whole get up after the horse like this must be like when professional wrestlers are coming up they're coming Mm -hmm. up their their you know get up and like oh do i want to be like a you know like a sassy or like mean it must be really crappy for the guy who might get a zebra a zebra so much more work (laughs) yeah or the guy who gets a horse with just like the n-word on its side yes um should I take that part out? You mean I N W A R D? Inward reflection oh, into in, the soul. Yeah, the inward. <laughs> yes, the inward reflection horse is exactly what you meant. <laughs> the therapy horse. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what if his horse had a saddle that said service animal? <laughs> yes. All right, so. <laughs> service animal do not pet. <laughs> yeah, you're right. See, here's how stupid I am. I really was thinking, because I noticed the horse looks like him, I was like, wow. He must have looked really hard to find that horse that looks like his makeup. <laughs> wow. No, I mean, I wasn't being serious when I said he paints himself that like that it, to match the horse. I'm sure there's a much deeper meaning in terms of the war paint, in terms of... Yeah, of the, of the, the arm tattoo stuff. Yeah, there's got to be more to it that I'm woefully ignorant of. I, I don't yeah. think it's because he's trying to match his horse. It, I don't think that's an... You're not ascribing any kind of... Uh, simpleness to him if he does, if that's the case. I would think it'd be awesome to match the horse. They should all match the horse. Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of neat. Um, I, I just, the whole paint thing, I mean, come on, what do they sleep like that? Do they wake up? I mean, how long does that take? I'm not, talking about the, they, they, I'm not even talking about the actors. I'm just mean, like, if you were to do this war paint stuff. I do you think it's like hunting party is like waiting outside his teepee? He's like, God darn it, Akatsuta, where are you? <laughs> he's sitting in front of a vanity with the, like the light he's bulbs. He's like, I'll be out in a minute. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just, oh, touch a little foundation, a little blush. He's, he's doing that like medieval torture thing on his eyelashes yes. to curl him up. And the cool thing about um, this episode is we learn what his name is, and I just butchered it because yeah. I'm waiting for it to show up in the subtitle so I can try and say it properly, but it yeah. was A-K-E-T-C-H-U-A or something like that. Akachua or, or something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, we learn a lot about uh, this guy. So he's, he's the star of the show tonight, so that's great. Um, I never learned it. Uh, someone said that. The Lakota that, language. Oh yeah, he he kicks him and sort of says a couple of things and uh, he goes and he even says that he talks to Doctor Ford. I never learned that language, Doctor Ford, or no, he doesn't talk to Doctor Ford. He says I never learned the, that tongue that Doctor Ford had you speak. Oh, he okay. wasn't speaking to Ford. He was referencing Ford. Oh right. Well, I, okay, fair enough. I was suggesting and I was wrong, but that he wasn't talking to him as Doctor Ford, but he was talking mm-hmm. to the uh, universal ethereal Doctor Ford. But that's obviously mm-hmm. proven to be incorrect by James. Thank you. Um, great shot. Horses having a snack. And the Indians uh, guys think it's that wrong. I don't mean is that right? I, am I kind of, is it okay if I call him the Indian guy? Well, I mean, I, right. I mean that's he's got a name. All right. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I'm so I don't you know I don't want anybody to think I'm I'm white. <laughs> All right, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm I'm from the Midwest, everybody. I'm trying. I'm doing my best here. Okay, just yeah. please give me a break. <laughs> you can't call um, him Native American because I'm not in America. Yeah, I was, I was thinking too. I was like, what, there, are Native Westworld, Indigenous West peoples, Native yeah. others, but an Indian's even not right. That's horrible too. No, that's because that's Christopher Columbus was a moron. Yes, that's true. All right. Uh, anyway, look at this guy. We just call him the Ghost Nation. Yeah, Ghost Nation. Well, I know. Okay, fair enough. But um, or it's by his name. Uh, mm-hmm. Which so, we can't pronounce yet. <laughs> which we don't know. So he, Anyway, Ed Harris gets an Uber back to the Indian encampment. Here. And this uh, reminded the, the, me a lot of that uh, our base in the forest, the little island that we have with the dried rabbits and everything oh, all yeah. over it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, James is talking about the video game The Forest where we had Fantastic nice, game yeah, played if you can. A lot of fun. Good multiplayer. Great way to bond with your friends. Um, by the way, speaking of bonding with friends, steak. Look at all this meat they got hanging up there. That's yeah, that's what I meant. That, that's the drying rack. Oh, that is what exactly what you meant. Mm-hmm. I was wondering what the fuck you were talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're right, yeah. Uh, cool. Um, also, why has he got his Twitter handle on this thing? His Twitter's at CCC. Mm, um, I believe it's a sun. Oh, the sun. Hmm. Could and, be. And three tables. And, yeah, that's what this is. Or, or, or he's trying to get a job at Staples. Oh, I was going to say Staples. I was waiting for you to finish so I can make a Staples joke. One of them should be bent up. Um, but they've got, like, they've been gathering um, suits and, uh, and ladies and humans. Thank you. Um, what are the, what are, so we don't. I mean, 
this episode doesn't really get into what they do with these people. No. We don't so, know what their motivations are. We don't know why they collect people. We don't know why they are trying to save people. All we know is they took Maeve's daughter, who was a host. Mm -hmm. They took Emily, the Man in Black's daughter, saved her, and they took a bunch of other people who were also humans that were being held captive, and they're effectively protecting them in some sense. We don't quite know why. Yeah. This episode might delve into that a little bit more. Or maybe okay. They took Emily? I don't... Is that... Yeah, Emily... Well, I mean... Oh, shit. Uh, sorry, keep going. Remember when she washed up on the shore with the, after the tiger attack, and they were standing there, and she's looked up at them? So, yes. Okay. That's oh, where she yeah, was reunited that's, with that's, her father. But, so the, then they let her go, then. All right, yeah. Oh, I remember now. Thank you very much. Uh, and, um, yeah, so uh, we had a little issue there with the computer, everybody. So, Ed Harris says, if you're going to you're gonna kill me here, why don't you just let, you could have kept riding. Like, what are you bothering for, Yeah, he just for, died buddy? naturally. Why, why yeah. bring him back here? Yeah, he was with those, those stream crabs. He was having mm -hmm. a good time. Um, so, uh, anyway, lots of the Lakota speaking mm -hmm. in this in this episode. And so, I, I tried to get, I can't take every dialogue, uh, but I did probably get more of these than this normal. This particular so. line right here is very important, and it speaks mm -hmm. to the rest of the episode in a big way. I don't really want to say why it speaks to this whole episode yet, because it kind of gives away too much at the beginning. Yeah. But just remember that he says, death is a passage from this brutal world. He and, references death as a door. Right. And that's incredibly important. Yes, and uh, it uh, speaks to their um, his uh, acceptance that there's something beyond life. Also, the which, phrase, you don't deserve the exit. Yeah. Which makes, it creates the impression that he was retaining his memories. We know that the title of this episode is Remember. And we slowly do learn that the Lakota of man here that we see has the same sort of awareness that Dolores and Maeve and the other ones have. He has an awakening. He right. remembers his past life. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say he's motivated by vengeance? It's, uh, I, I wouldn't say that. Um, I, I, I would say love more than anything. Oh, yeah. Okay. Of separation, wow. of longing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, this is a little bit ominous though, and we has the the girl. Although we we're not sure if he's threatening her, but it seems fairly safe. It's good that she's alive and she seems right. okay. Of course, unsupervised. However, she's also a robot, so uh, who cares? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, 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 I, kid. I, I kid. I kid. <laughs> That's the whole point of Westworld. <laughs> I know, but she's a robot. Um, yeah. Uh, I would actually feel horrible if I watched a robot die. I'd feel bad when the Roomba get, you know, gets stuck yeah. underneath the carpet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the ca cabinet thing. But it, it dies before it makes it back to its docking yeah. phase. And it, I mean. the Roomba, James bought a Roomba, and when it dies, it goes, James, Daddy, Daisy, Daisy. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Uh, by the way, some rabbit died for everybody to eat, and that's how it works. Uh, all right, so there's Ed Harris. She's looking at him, but she's not, remember, she was... Uh, should have memories about the man in black. She was uh, in the room when Maeve was attacked. Uh, I think we go into some kind of flashbacky things about. But it's really that nothing that that basically reveals that she has those memories yet until we get to this point where she has the flashback. Right, where he, it's the sight of him triggers her to to have this memory. But we get to see some of the nice times that Maeve and her daughter had at their homestead. That's fun. Um, what is she looking at? She's looking at the rock with the blood painted on it with the maze. Oh, it yeah. says that the ghost gave this to me. Oh, okay. And so, we find out much later in the episode exactly who the ghost is, why it was given, and what his intentions were. It also reveals that she is in contact with the ghost guy. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. You know, in some way. But this is before where she's sitting in their camp. So Yeah, the important thing to know is that up until this point, we were led to believe that the Ghost Nation guy was an adversary. He was the one who was coming in on cycle by cycle, narrative by narrative, and slaughtering them. And we yeah. come to find, and this is a little bit of a spoiler for the episode, but we come to find that that is not the truth. That is right. not the case. He was never doing that. Yes. One of Maeve's key flashbacks includes the Ghost Nation guy and Ed Harris, mm -hmm. but we learn a lot more about that sequence, and, and mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, just like you said. So, poor Maeve, here she is. Uh, now, this reveals another big character development that's sort of been brewing the last few episodes, is Lee Sizemore is more like Lee cares more. And you remember from the past episode, everyone kind of abandoned. They got the word that the cradle had, or the, the, the mesa was in, under attack. Mm -hmm. So they all ran off and left him there. So he basically had to, with the help of one other staff member, had to push her gurdy up to this repair room. Yeah. He is basically saying that this person needs to survive. Yes, yes. You're saying right in this moment here. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, he breathes. But this guy's like some sort of a head tech operator guy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I went a little bit too forward. But he's fr he's kind of in a hurry. I'm sure this world, everything's going crazy. He's well, like, hey, get, yeah. get, get that out of here. I, it looks I don't to work me like, like Minnie Mouse. I'm, I do Mickey yeah. Mouse. It looks to me like he was one of the higher-ups, one of the managers, yeah. who has thrown on a smock, and he's doing the grunt work now because right. there's no one else left to do it, hence yeah. the reason he's wearing all black. Yeah, it was like with the uh, person at McDonald's, um, you know, has a 
a, a jacket or something. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so uh, we're we're busy. I can't I can't do it. He's pulling a Pepsi can out of this lady's head. He's got a very young Billy Bob Thornton vibe to him. Yeah, a bit. He's got kind of a, a youthful face that def- de- 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 belies his um, mm-hmm. wizened gray hair mm-hmm. and that shock on the top of his head. I got some gray hairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I shave them off. Okay. <laughs> they take forever to color. I tried to color them in, mm. and this fucking doesn't work. Um, so, uh, all right, a uh, bunch of um, gross uh, stuff, and um, anyway, so Lee Sizemore does. Does he think he has authority over this guy? Because he kind of yells at him, "Hey, she can. You know, this one's really important. You got to do this work." So the guy, yeah, I mean, think this Sizemore, is a persuasive case. He's right here. out of his league when it comes to the tech side of things. He's on the creative side. He's yeah. the narrative guy. You're right. So he really doesn't have a lot to say here, aside from the fact that he's saying that Mabe is important because. The entire network's down. The admins are not able to administer commands, mm-hmm. yet he's telling her him that this particular host is special because she can control people with her mind. Yeah. She has rights to do things that they can't even conceive of at this moment. Yeah, yeah, and so that makes her special and therefore worthy of uh, going to mm-hmm. the top of the queue. Yep. One time I was having heart pain, or chest pain, heart, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I'm, I was, in, you know, my dad was like, hey, why don't we go make sure you don't die? So I went to the emergency room. It was really terrifying. We were worried. Mm-hmm. And as soon as you tell, this is a hot tip for everybody. You want to get to the front of the line of the emergency room? Mm-hmm. Tell them you have chest pain because you, if you die in the waiting room, you can sue them. And so mm-hmm. they, they move you to the top of the thing for liability. Mm-hmm. Turned out I had a uh, inflamed esophagus, which is in the middle near the heart. V- weird nebulous pain, terrifying experience. But I was mm-hmm. glad to find out I have a normal heartbeat. Cool. Yep. They wheeled me out. They they made me drink this purple shit that that made oh yeah n- radioactive. Out. Was it radio? It's like an X-ray to see what's going on there. Or no, not like barium or something. No, or? it was a numbing agent. Oh, a numbing agent. And maybe. therefore, the the point was, if it uh, alleviated the symptoms, it means it was treating something in the esophagus. Yep. I um, drink stuff like that to numb. It's called beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So you're here for a heart problem, huh? Here, have some beer. That'll make you feel better. <laughs> Prescription beer. Mm-hmm. Diagnosis pain. Um, all right, there, uh, there's Maeve. Uh, she's not really reactive as much this episode, unfortunately. Maeve, blink once. No, she's not really like... speaking at all. She's yeah. kind of um, not in a coma. She's aware. She's looking around. She's blinking her eyes, but she's sure. not really active. She's in a state of, um, shock. what's the word, diagnostic shock, I would say, or something like that. Sure, yeah, suspense mode, maybe. Yeah, or, she, uh, she really can't hold her own at this moment. Not really, but we don't know what's or going so on. Or so we think at this point. Exactly. That's what I was hinting at. Mm-hmm. Wink, wink. Um, there's, um, okay, so there's her, her, her Maeve's daughter. Do we don't even know her name. Does she have a name? Maeve's daughter. Lil Maeve. Lil, Lil, <laughs> Lil Maeve. <laughs> mini, mini Maeve. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, okay, so... All right, so the guy walks up, um, you know, nice guy, uh, you know, not to judge appearance, but you know, I, I, would, I wouldn't blame a child for being a little intimidated by this guy walking up to have a conversation. Yeah, I mean, if he showed up to work at my place like that, we'd politely take him aside and say, you really got to go home and change. Yeah. Sir, the dark part goes on the bottom. No. Yeah. Okay, we have rules around here. Haven't you seen the manual? Uh, so anyway, he refers to her as a kind of, a, talks to her as a... Um, a, not an equal, but he speaks to her as if they have a com- shared experience in terms of having lived many lives. And it's important to know that he does speak to her in English at times, but the vast majority of the dialogue that he has between her is in Lakota. Right. As yeah. though she can understand, yeah. which I assume she can in some way. She looks at him like she understands. But it does like show that. that she retains memory, she knows what's going on, she knows yeah. who he is, and she knows who the man in black is. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, um... All right. So, okay. So then he's talking about the lives we've led, and this initiates a sequence of uh, his story. So we, mm-hmm. we kind of, this is a large part of this episode is this backstory of his. Uh, we open on a, 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 a quite a lovely young lady. She looks like she's uh, having a good morning and mm-hmm. great eyebrows, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, who wouldn't want to wake up near a bunch of fur and stuff and a flower and things are nice for him? You had a whole thing going on here. This is good. He had, an, he had a Sega CD in the other, in the man cave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But it's basically referencing to the life that he lived before he became the Lakota warrior mm-hmm. that he is now. Mm-hmm. You know, it's true love when there's a flower before you wake up. Mm-hmm. That's how that works. And um, then here's that important line that was referenced at the beginning of the episode, take my heart when you go, something that she would say to him. Mm-hmm. Mikante ki yu ha ya ye. Mm-hmm. To you, can you, James. Mm-hmm. Mikante ye burrito Ooh, ta, yeah, yeah. Take my burrito when you go, Hart. Oh, I will. All right, I know. All right, so look at him without his makeup. We finally get a shot at this guy. Mm-hmm. I actually recognize him from stuff. I, I, I'm you know, sure he's been in other things. I've seen him in other, in other things. He's too good of an actor in this episode to not have been in other things. Good, good actor, symmetrical nipples, Oscar-worthy mm-hmm. belly button. And uh, anyway, great life. I mean, you know, this is the standard great life. You know, you wake up next mm-hmm. to a hot chicken, you got a flower, and everything's good. And uh, our family was never far from our reach. Uh, he's... 
this is all him sort of speaking to the young girl, but although she's just sort of a proxy for us, yeah. the audience at this mm-hmm. point. Um, so, like, so we get. And what is she doing? Dried fish? I thought those were strips of leather. Wow, no, those that's, fish. That's the whole point. And of the, the good shot thing is we can kind of get through this really quickly in the sense that not a lot goes on. He's basically setting the this tone for where he lives and mm-hmm. the experiences that he had. Yeah, yeah. So keep your eye. Eyes open for parasols. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think are. there's gonna be many here. Not in the uh, not the, in the Lakota village. <laughs> Chicago Ghost Nation. They're 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 more accustomed to the sun than the. Mm-hmm. All right. So anyway, he's got his friends. I like these like a uh, stitchy sort of patchwork fabric thing. So these are kind of fun. You know, these mm-hmm. like they're probably uh, animal. I mean, not probably. It's animal skins and yeah. Uh, I used to it's have tanned a, leather. I used to have like a deer leather wallet. I bought it in mm-hmm. Wisconsin. It was like a nice light oh. brown, and eventually it wore out. Um, so uh, all right. So somebody comes walking up. I don't know. That's a thing. That's just... Uh, anyway, he's wandering around. <laughs> is this in his mind, or is this his mem- more memory jumping? That's why No, no, he, no, he's wandering around, and he comes across the place where the whole mm-hmm. nonsense went down between yeah. Arnold and Wyatt, Wyatt. being Dolores. And yeah, this yeah. is the end of Arnold's mortal life. This is the church. This is the, the scene that was teased all throughout season one. So who rode a white horse in that moment? And, and I imagine this is connected to the horse running from that chaos, right? Probably, yes. Yeah. Horses all do. The shooting and all that. We yeah. don't really know exactly how long they've been here when we get to that point, which we are going to get to. Yeah, we're going to get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> James is going, come on, moving his hand mm-hmm. around. Um, anyway, he's at the church, and he's walking around and uh, looking at stuff. we got a lot of dead bodies everywhere. That is a uh, real trouble. This is from after... No, this is this Wyatt's big thing? Because yeah. really, is wasn't that a separate event? By the way, collapsed parasol. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Before she died, she took the initiative to close the parasol. Yeah, but Dolores doesn't want him to blow away. I mean, she's mm-hmm. a responsible mass murderer. Um, there's another. No, it's the same one. Uh, yeah. So, Victrola spinning. That tells you something. But oh, another collapsed parasol. Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. So obviously a lot going on here. This is where uh, Dolores kills Bernard and Arnold. Ar- Arnold. <laughs> big difference. There. So this is the. The real Arnold? This is the real Arnold. This is the moment in which Arnold perishes. Okay. Man, I get so confused. So, remember but the whole Victrola is plane? This, and, yeah, I do remember that, but I'm, I'm, was that Victrola thing, I guess it's the same massacre, right? Is that, yeah. Because yeah, otherwise, I don't remember two massacres. No, nope, this is the one and only time it yeah. happened. Man, it's hard living on Earth. It's so easy to get their massacres confused. Yeah. You know? we, so many of them, yeah. we got to quit racking up massacres. How about we just grow up as a species and just all have hugs and... Uh, Snacks. All right, there he is, all gross and bloodied, and turned into a dead guy. And um, Dolores blew her own brains out in this mm-hmm. moment here, right? Remember that? Yep. Dolores that is nice gone. One. Yeah, the chair stayed up. That's uh, the good. only difference is you can reboot Dolores. You cannot reboot Arnold. You mm-hmm. can only make a pale imitation of him. Yeah. In the form of Bernard. Would you say Bernard's a pale imitation? I would say so. Yes. Okay. He was made I'm from memories, leave. not from a direct consciousness upload. Yes. So it was Dolores's opinions and impressions of him, and Doctor Ford's impressions of Bernard. That oh, of Arnold that gave birth to Bernard. Yeah, yeah. Like if I ever have to re- recreate you from my memories, James, mm-hmm. it'll be like a uh, boy. I've talked myself into a corner here. Um, you'll be like a, a gentle Mister Young Mister Young Mister Burns. Okay, that's That'll not that's not very nice. That'll be fun. I take that. Okay, about the same amount of strength as he does. No, come on, come on. You're much. You have much better posture mm-hmm. for now. Uh, all right. So he walks into the thing. Uh, into the thing. <laughs> well, buildings are things, aren't mm-hmm. they? And he finds on the table whiskey with a shot poured and a uh, map, which we haven't seen this before, the maze. With the... Um, yes, we have. That's well, the thing that was in the tin that Arnold was showing to Dolores in season one. I know. I mean, I meant before, like, in this season. This has not, oh, no. not been present much in season two. No, so but we have, a... we have seen it. Of course. But... We, we made it, I made it. I interviewed my neuroscience professor brother about the mm-hmm. meaning of this thing and if it looks like an actual cross-section of a brain, if you want to search mm-hmm. the channel that's on there. And um, so, yeah, no, of course we've seen it before. The little man in the middle, I like it. This is good wood, woodworking. This would take a lot. It'd be really easy to break off one of those pieces. I respect whoever carved that. Good job. It's probably 3D printed. Mm. And uh, there, <laughs> and, but he, what is, you know, he recognizes this, yes, but the, the whiskey is also an indication that, are they trying to hint that other other uh, bad guys who drink whiskey? I guess they all drink whiskey. It doesn't. Yeah, it's a very common thing yeah. in, in the Wild West, though. Yeah, it's like but, he found water. <laughs> but it's almost as though uh, this is sort of like the Peter Abernathy moment where he sees the picture. Mm-hmm. Something about this resonates with this man, and it sticks with him, and it changes him, and it becomes an obsession for him. So this is his first time seeing it? Yes. Okay. All right, fair enough. Uh, okay, black screen there. And um, 
back to his uh, little land, little land. That's condescending. Yes. His uh, his encampment with his friends. Yeah, we've and, got a and much like it, the the picture kind of encompassed the all the waking thoughts of Peter Abernathy. Mm -hmm. He starts obsessing over this image so much so that he starts carving it into everything that he comes across, right. including animal skin, flesh, hide. Yep. And this kind uh, of forms ground. this kind of forms the basis of where wh where and why we kept seeing the that symbol underneath the scalps of so many people. These were all people who had been felled by this character in the past. He stitched the thing onto the underside of the scalp and he simply put it back onto them. Well, well yes, and that is an interesting detail because the so whole So now now what, we know where it comes from. One of the that was such a mystery like why yeah. is it under the So he's he he made it his mission. This is kind of a spoiler whether they mm -hmm. reveal it very, you know, in this sequence here coming up uh that he's the he's the uh, spreader of this ma maze thing right. he chose um, his own destiny he, he chose his own narrative yeah. basically he says yeah. this is a truth that i have found in this world yeah. this world is the wrong world we'll find out later on where he kind of gets that right. from that becomes his his driving force and then he starts trying to spread that message across the entirety of the world i still have a question about putting it on the underside of a scalp i think that's cool because it, it, it's a way of, of of it persisting even after death, right? Because mm -hmm. the humans who he's ostensibly trying to outsmart, mm -hmm. so to speak, aren't going to see that. But if how does he get it on the underside of the scalp and then reattach it? Without... Well, he doesn't reattach it. The 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 medics guide. But they don't notice that someone drew a uh, like. How do you put it on the scalp without someone? I guess they don't really care it? because no one else is going to see it. Why would they, they patch don't... up something that's not visible? I know why. Would, why would they? Not why would they be patching up a guy with his scalp ripped off his skull and like like when you're like stretching saran wrap over a casserole mm -hmm. and see that the saran wrap has a weird drawing? Wouldn't you note that there's a weird drawing, especially on the uh, on the underside of a scalp? They're not paid to analyze things; they're just text. They're eh, come on. They're, I hear you, but there's certainly that would rate unless there's some other way of getting it on the underside of the skull that we don't know about. When I'm not sure you could do that. I, I could see it. someone look at that and say, "Ah, above my pay grade." Get my job done. Go home. I don't get paid to talk about mysterious symbols from above. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here to hack their, to uh, straighten their wee wees out and put them back out mm -hmm. on the soccer field. Um, all right. So uh, speaking, of Lakota, and uh, she anyway. She's no one else really comprehends it quite. Um, although that, that's not quite true, but they're a little worried about him because he's acting a little goofy now with this. With this right. Thing. He's it's become like, obsessed by this symbol. Yeah. He's is, carving it into everything that he can get his hands on. Yeah. 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 This is like me when uh, Fallout 4 came out. Um, so <clears throat> he's, uh, he's, he's dialed into this new voice. He's carving stuff. He's obsessed with it. And, uh, and he said, I, I heard a new voice inside, which is important because you heard from the, the bicameral mind in season one. They, they said that essentially the path to consciousness is when you start to hear the voice inside, the inner dialogue. Mm -hmm. At first you interpret it as the voice of God, and then you as soon interpret it as your own voice. Yes. And then it's your own voice leading yourself, directing you when you achieve, achieve true consciousness. You achieve your own achieve the ability to choose your own path. The authority of your own future. Yes. Right. Well done. Um, so uh, I just want to say a shout out to the fingernail department. Um, mm -hmm. Oftentimes in movies, the actors have pretty hands and their thing, their fingernails mm -hmm. and teeth look great. Nope. They made them look realistic. And uh, get, come on, dude, put your cuticle, get your cuticles. Isn't that what they do? With, I don't know, something. Go to the ticket to, yeah. to the place where those women wear the masks because they're going to die if they breathe the air where they work. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, okay. Um, so he's telling the story of love. This is all. Yeah, like you were saying, love. Uh, this is the first time I lost her. Um, so he he uh, is recounting his awakening process. So um, anyway, people are wondering. This is one uh, of the text talking, right? The problem there. He gets bored. Mm -hmm. Like a little more bloodshed. So th this is him being. Is this where he's being reassigned into someone new? Right. The, the guy's yeah. basically saying, "Wait, we got to do all this work on him right now. This is a, this is a pain in the ass, right? Who's yeah. going to do all this? It's going to take four hours." Right. They're going to repurpose him to a more interesting narrative. They mm -hmm. said that his prior narrative was a little bit dull. They're going to spice things up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did, is this anybody familiar? I noticed that they put this uh, person mm, here. No, I'm bad with faces. I don't know. Yeah. Huh. Well, it appears to be a person. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, all new dialogue tree. So yeah, they're they're. Re-uploading everything in here uh, to uh, something a little scarier. They're basically yep. programming in the Ghost Nation um, protocols or information or whatever mm -hmm. you call it. So they haven't even heard. So these guys are complaining about basically how you having to do extra work that they weren't didn't really want to do, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as you keep there's doing, his name Akechita. 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 Yeah, we're, I'm sure we're saying that wrong, but uh, you know. Uh, so he is reborn. However, look <laughs> at this. By the way, I remember this photo here yeah. was. Uh, uh, I can't tell what it is. All right. 
great. And it's counting yeah. how many times we go to another shot and you read the subtitle. Yeah, I know. I don't. I, I, I have a flawed brain. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I'm sorry. And then this time I came out breathing fire. No, we need to have like a, a jar. Like every time one of us reads the subtitle, we put a quarter in. Yeah, yeah. I could use four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. That would be sixteen hundred times. Um, so uh, yeah, there's no subtitle, so I don't know what to do with. So it's essentially saying that he came out as a different man. He came yeah. out as a more violent nature. It mm -hmm. has his current Ghost Nation Lakota warrior that we know of now, and it shows him slaughtering and killing. Whereas before, he was a peaceful man who lived a peaceful life, yep. which they deemed to be dull and boring. So they tried to spice it up. Much like when professional wrestlers mm -hmm. come out as a whole new heel. First, you're a right. good guy, then you're a heel. Like Gold Dust became mm -hmm. a. The cover, that was a guy. Uh, and and the important thing here is he's remembering this. He remembers. Yeah his own reprogramming his own repurposing right right he remembers killing davy crockett mm -hmm. <laughs> he's just hacking him in right and right in the uh, shirt pouch uh take that jerk look at that face he's not even making much of a face if you get murdered by a maniac do you want him to be like scrape crazy face or just calm let's i don't think i really care either way hmm hmm i think i'd rather have calm because it'd be easier to describe it depends on how artist. long it takes for him to kill you yeah if it's quick it doesn't really matter but if it's a yeah. long prolonged thing you don't really want to be the person in the pit with the uh, puts the lotion on the skin or else it gets a hose again oh you don't want to be that oh yeah uh silence of the lambs right yes Good. well done so anyway that's him doing the doing the dab uh, is that what that's called doing the dab the well dab the, other arm needs, the other arm needs to be extended at more of an angle for that to be a dab but yeah well you know why don't you be a little sensitive to different cultures james maybe mm -hmm. it's okay for people to express themselves a little differently yes. i'm joking i, I joke <laughs> speaking of baldness this guy's going oh my eyebrows my, match my mustache. Look, he's got. It's like his face has three mustaches. Yes. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, as happens, the dude gets his uh, neck sliced open, and his uh, life is terminated in a horrible way. Slicing. Yep. Oh God. So it shows that he's a brutal warrior. He kills with no hesitation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then this is the point where we see how he gets the bloody prints on the sides of his face. Oh, I that's mean, right. Yeah. You can assume that this is part of his narrative, and then he goes through this kind of ritual all the time, so that that actually is not makeup. So it's always blood. I think or it probably he found is. It, like, I mean, ordered like uh, some off eBay. Some we red, do red know stuff. that their narratives re repeat themselves. We see him go through the same loop again in another yeah. part of the episode where he comes across the same exact man. Right. So we know that these are repetitious actions. Yes. So I assume that every time you see him, that is actually blood, specifically blood from that man. I, I think you're right. Yeah, and I actually appreciated the repetition of it. I actually yeah. thought they did a good job. I thought that was a great choice from the director's standpoint to. Uh, show that re repetition mm -hmm. um look at these guys they see they don't match he kind of matches his horse he's got the stripes he's got a stripe <laughs> i don't think um, that's the intent though. well you know you gotta be inspired by it it can be close maybe mm -hmm. this well when we maybe this guy's horse is wearing a, a raccoon mask <laughs> back yeah there. i mean there's got to be some sort of more interesting reason why they would oh yeah you know appear in that way some yeah. sort of spiritual religious purpose yes totally i mean like people who paint them their bodies in certain ways wear certain things like the people who go to coachella all mm -hmm. have very yes. deep and powerful explanations for why they paint their bodies as they do so yes anyway they were kind of this roving band of uh, marauders they were sort of pretty much a terror force i mean these guys yeah. are pretty scary they were the top around. predators of their land they yeah. really had nothing to fear from anyone they were the ones who did the killings they were not the ones who were killed that's right they filled skins too and <laughs> No, but I appreciate that they had like a logistics sort of thing. Like yeah. they're not just you know, and, and then the guys go off and they're. Uh, I think they're talking about um, water. There. Yes. Yeah. Not not video game skins points mm -hmm. on Steam or something like that. Uh, they kept showing this shot, and I know that we see various uh, configurations of you know characters and horses go walking by, but I wonder what, if there was more significance to this because this is a very deliberate staging of this shot. This tree they kept. You know, centering in these in this frame in these shots. I'm just curious what that's. Well, like I don't a, have any. It's like a border area between different biomes. Almost, you have this like deserty area, then you mm -hmm. have like the forest area. And the last time we saw something similar to this, we saw essentially Logan being sent off. And we saw that particular shot, the one that you saw immediately before. This one here. That one. Oh, oh sorry. No, right there. Yeah. That was in the trailer, and the trailer basically juxtaposed this with the shot of the man, the naked man, who I, we presumed in the trailer was Logan, yeah. sitting under the tree. Right. So we know that's coming up. So he's entered the the dune area, yes. and a giant sea slug swims by and mm. goes, rrr, rrr. Yes. Dune, dune? I've dune? never seen Dune, but I, I know of it. Isn't Kyle MacLachlan in that? Yes. Is that him? Yeah, I, I'm him. totally guessing. It's, uh, um, uh, yeah, that's a good, I think you should reboot that shit. That'd be a good show, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Hulu, get on it. Handmaid's do do um, from the, okay, yeah, so here we go. We got a dead horse. When he says the, the presence of others, he's referring to humans, those who he's forbidden to kill. 
which I'm hoping. Right. More than is uh, just his own little community. Yeah. Right, so it shows that he has a conscious recognition of the difference between himself as a host and humans as humans. Right, right. And understood that there was some f- power here, as by this right. quote, which I shall not read, uh, <laughs> insisting that uh, you know he's not calling all of his, he's not truly making all of his own decisions. At least that was in the past. Right, this entire episode is, is almost like a spiritual journey of this one man. It's, it's almost like a an allegory of Dante's Inferno, the descent into the underworld, into yeah. Hades, his spiritual journey for for truth. Yes, like so when I go to the mall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, finish your thought. No, that was it. Oh. Uh, by the way, newcomers, James, great name mm-hmm. for people who just lost their virginity. Well, I mean, they always call it, in the very, in season one, they reference the, the guests were called newcomers. Oh, yeah. Well, my point stands. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, uh, yeah, there's a naked man. This is in the trailer, right, that mm-hmm. we saw. And so we're wondering, you know, everybody speculated it was who we thought, and it turned out to be Harry, Harry Leg Guy. Mm-hmm. Look at those things, man. This guy's got hair for miles. Um, holding this junk. You don't need to protect your wiener. It's usually darker than the rest I don't of the body. I think that's what he's doing. Well, I'm talking about sunburn, you know. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, his hands are bound. Oh, I guess that's true. All right, good point. Anyway, he's, he's, he's had a little bit of a mental snap, though. He seems to yeah. be muttering a bunch of stuff. And Akichua, or however you say that, says that he goes mad from being in the sun. Right, right. Which, which is, I assume is a, is a very valid thing. As all white people can attest, it takes about a half hour, and you got to go inside. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you'll be wounded. Um, so this is this is no good. No, uh, but he sees the guy, and he doesn't quite believe his eyes, right? And he's like, oh, man, this is, I don't, what the heck? I don't, this, no, no, I don't buy it. Well, it, it. I guess that kind of, I guess he did get his hands unbound by that one shot. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> he, true. So they were bound, but they are no longer. Right. Well, they're resting on his lap, which yeah. is what most of us do when we sit down, probably. Um, so he wants out. He's had enough. This is this is a bit much for the rich boy. This is going to be tough for a lot for even people who aren't um, the sons of uh, industrial magnates. Right. But just yeah. like when uh, this... Lakota warrior saw that maze sign and it spoke to him and resonated with him. What Logan is saying right here is affecting him in more of a way than we can possibly know at this point. He says, where's, where's the door? And then he says something else that's incredibly important and I mm-hmm. hope you got it. Okay. Uh, during this one here? Yes. This is the wrong world. Yeah. Say it, and those say it right. Say it right. The, 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 this is the wrong world. The, 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 this is the, haven't you ever uh, read a Tried out for the theater department. Yes, Come but, on, but we are not doing that now. <laughs> this is wrong. not an audition, indeed. Yes, but oh, no. Sorry, uh, James. Sorry, James. Yes, but the, essentially, this gets him thinking. Mm-hmm. Essentially, is as to where the door is, and we've heard reference to the door before when Robert was talking to the Man in Black through yeah. the, the proxy of another host, saying right. that your jo- journey is to find the door, the way out. Yeah. Yeah. And now, as a, in a spiritual sense, he's trying to find he his journey becomes trying to find the spiritual exit, the the right. way out of this world, because he reminisces, he remembers his past lives, and he feels as though this violent path that he's on is not his true calling. Right. He wants he believes the true world is the world where he was happy and living with his uh, love interest. Exactly, exactly. And for some reason, this benevolent looking dinosaur it's like is a, a toucan is observer. Uh, <laughs> well, dinosaurs are bird, birds are descended yeah. from dinosaurs, so. That's kind of neat. I like that. Um, yes, he's he's really looking for his, his lady. It was a much better situation than being a marauding maniac. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but anyway, nice moment here. He grabs the the uh, horse blanket off the horse, which and is turns it into a smallpox. In fact, yeah, yeah. How about a little payback, bitch? Yeah. Um, but uh, wraps it around him. I thought that was a lovely little gesture, and it's mm-hmm. probably valuable. He could sell that, put that, take that blanket yep. to Antiques Roadshow and some. Well, there was I saw a guy he had an Antiques Roadshow. He had a, a like a chief blanket from Arizona. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like, I saw authentic. that one. It was worth a, like a million bucks or something. It was like a hundred. So I don't remember. Yeah, it was, it was worth it. A- yeah it, was, yeah, it was a fortune. It was like an honored chief guy, and he was like, oh, yeah. my God. Uh. So a uh, really beautiful blanket. It was blue and white. Yeah, and but stuff. the good thing, he knows because his memory maintains, mm-hmm. he knows he can give him the blanket because it respawns in his teepee. <laughs> he gets his inventory back. Yeah. It's his, his, uh, his staples. Right? Yes. Um, but anyway, gives the guy a blanket. Nice thing to do, I guess, if you're although you are in the desert. Come on. The last thing he needs is a blanket. I'm joking. I'm, I basically blankets are useful. Um, and then he hops on him and he rides him around and turns him into his own horse. Mm-hmm. I made that joke while we were watching it, and James didn't laugh. <laughs> so I'm putting it on the internet forever. So it's, um, it's, it's, your kind will come for you. I like that. He's like, don't worry. The you fidelity guys. is I didn't laugh again. Well, the system fidelity. works. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was You don't have to ignore. No, humorous. No, stop. Believe me. I know... I don't work with quality. I'm a quantity comedian, okay? Mm-hmm. I just launch it all the fuck out there and hope something yes. something destroys 
lunch. See? That failed too. Something destroys lunch. No, I'm just saying I'm very aware when it fails. I Trust me, I, I, I have such hate for every attempt of mine. Everything I do is embarrassing. Okay, so um, what, what did that so, last screenshot say? Uh, want me to read his it? His words, you can just say this one because this one's important. Oh, all right. But his words cracked something open in me. So the, the words being this is the wrong world. The wrong world, yeah. And the other words? Uh, thanks for the blanket. Mm, th 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 thanks for the blanket. No. That Logan said? Yeah. I don't remember. I he no said, idea. this is the wrong world. Yeah. And Boy, and if boy you, Meets World. Have and you if you it? click back on what he said. Oh, here? What? Keep going. Well, where's the door? Oh, where's the door? Yeah, that was before the wrong world. I thought you were saying yeah. he followed it up after the wrong world thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, so the door you're saying is uh, in his mind now, too. Yeah. Right. Why so does he, he trust this guy? Is this just the most... I mean, I'm not saying that it... Well, he recognizes that this him. man is different from him. This is someone that he is forbidden by a higher power to harm. This is a newcomer. This is someone that, who is a, almost like a spiritual figure to him, in a sense. It's, mm -hmm. it's a different type of entity. Yeah. So when he speaks to him, it's almost as though he holds his words in sure. more reverence. Mm, yeah, okay, all right. Or it comes at him from a different angle, maybe. In his and mind. he was already yeah. at a moment of self-awakening such that words like that kind of took an already ajar a door and kind of pried, pried it open a little bit more. Cracked it open. And you have to realize is that the age of Logan in this one, this happened a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So you can only imagine how much more progression this character has had since that moment. Right, good point. Excellent, yes. Um, so there's some more meat and some steaks and stuff. Those are probably like rabbits and squirrels. But look, they got a boar coming in. That's nice. That's always a good day for everybody. I yep. uh, never realized I'd been here. I had been here before. So he's just remembering it all. Mm -hmm. Just coming back to his uh, little community here. Um, this is like a trade thing, right? What are they selling? He's trading the boar for this basket of uh, feathers? What is he doing with all those feathers? I don't know. I can probably feather stuff, maybe. Maybe. Um, down blanket. Down <laughs> he needs to make a new one. He just lost it's his. a gigantic blanket. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Well, I could talk about feathers for some reason. Now, if you so, go back a little bit. Of course. That image of the man on the teepee that looks a lot like the guy in the middle oh, of the maze. Oh, shit. Damn, James. Thanks for checking that. Yeah, mm -hmm. look at that thing. That is certainly it. Do you think that was there as part of the tribe community before he saw the maze? And he just added their symbol to this maze thing? No, because he saw the maze thing mm -hmm. with it. So mm -hmm. did he, add, I'm just curious, yeah, did he add this after he saw it or was it already there? The one thing that's not perfectly clear, clear to me at this time is that he used to live in this village apparently as a peaceful man with mm -hmm. the woman. Yeah, with his girlfriend. And then he was repurposed into a brutal warrior. Yeah. And when he was repurposed into the brutal warrior, did he leave the clan? To, did he leave his tribe? And now he's coming back and he's trading with them as though they're a separate people? Or is he still considered to be one of them who still lives with them, only they kind of travel around and do the hunting. I think right. that's what it is. Mm. I think his role in the community changed and that they still know him and he's bringing back, you know, hunting spoils for them. Mm. I disagree. And I'm sorry for saying that, mm -hmm. but not a bad, yeah, I don't know. It, what, if that were the case, there wouldn't be a trade, would there? Wouldn't I mean? I guess what, maybe they have to go back out on their. So thing. you think that's what they're doing? They're trading. That's how I read it because the guy they showed this person showing up with the thing. That, that, that's how I I read it. Like they're the ones out hunting. They, these guys are gathering, and so now we have a gather hunt. But it seems like they knew each other. That they, they were familiar knew with other. one another. See, that's why I don't think they live there because they're more like uh, they maintain their peace by providing each other with goods. You know, um, it could be, and, because... and, and, he, and it's, it's it's also plausible that the Ghost Nation warriors wouldn't have animosity towards these regular people. You know, mm -hmm. like they should be out hunting the, the you know the, the whiteies that come it's possible, around yeah. and stuff. But it is safe but, to say that he once lived as a peaceful man in this specific community. We right. know that for a fact, and which means it's possible that he's the one that orchestrated and painted that thing on the teepee in a, in a separate life. Yes, yes, I agree with that. And also because he recognizes her from now, that wouldn't mm -hmm. be the case had he been regularly visiting this camp because he would have seen her already. Unless this was the first time for that or whatever, but I don't know. I think I'm... And, and yeah, the I'm, subtitle yeah. when he first approaches the camp is kind of important to that point, too. Oh, is it in one of ours here? Yeah. Uh, I never realized I had been here before. Right. Yeah, which speaks to memories coming back and stuff. Uh, yeah, right. Which yeah. also serves to kind of suggest that no, he does not live here; that he's part of a separate tribe. Right, right. That seems to be more nomadic. They don't seem to be as right. I don't, yeah. So uh, anyway, so he sees her and he goes, "Oh my God, look at her! Oh, look at those eyes in your eyes." Peter Frampton, James, Google it. Come on, Spotify, okay. Spotify motherfucker. No, I, don't, I don't. I don't really listen to music. What? I'm a white noise yeah. person. Well, I'll say no. That would be that would be a describing of me, not you. Um, 
All right. I like. I, like, I kind of like the sense of surprise that his hand print makes him like, oh no, like like Macaulay Culkin. I was about yeah. to say, it's like when he finds out his mom left for vacation without him. <laughs> the garage door's open. Ah! <laughs> he tried after shave for the first time. <laughs> So, anyway, he sees his old beautiful lady, and he's like, "Oh man, jeez, yep. I got some memories about going yeah the on. eyes. I remember them, which is incredibly mm-hmm. important in this episode. Again, the title, remember, remember, yeah. He is recollecting all the kind of yep. things that happened in this past life, and in a way, this is like Maeve's experience, yep. sort of, with her daughter, where she he can't really express this feeling he has towards someone who is deeply part of his yep. his, 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 his very being. Yeah, but, his internal psyche is awakening. He yep. realizes that something is not right here. Right. Right. Now, I do remember some guy was like, hey, don't look at my girlfriend, asshole. Yeah. And he goes like, oh, yeah, look wherever I want. And it starts to turn into a little bit of a, a male standoff, which yeah. is just classic, classic masculine male behavior. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, let's fight over something stupid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so um, anyway, the, the, it diffuses. It diffuses, right? So now we get back to, now I like forgot that he was talking to her. So I was like, oh, my God, why no. is she here? Um, no, I didn't. But anyway, it's him telling her a story. Yep. Is, yeah. So we uh, speaking of that, stories, um Maeve is having her neck sliced open on the right. side. Right, so this is the tech that Lee Sizemore was forced to leave the room from. He said, basically, yeah. I have to ask you to leave. I'm going to do what I need to do here. But right. it turns out that we find out that the tech is working on orders that are a little bit different from what Lee is hoping he'll do. Yeah. He's not trying to patch her up and trying to save her. He's trying to extract data and understand why she is special and unique. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. really have any sort of emotional care for Maeve. Right. We got more. does not bode well. Certainly not. Yeah, and I think more of that's coming up because the next shot, this, I, this yeah. is just like a quick dip into this Right, moment. but it shows that what he's doing is clearly not something that you would do if you're trying to patch someone up. Yeah, this is not patching up. This is deep, deep, deep patch. Yes. Not, what's the opposite of patch? Deep patch Chopra. Deep patch Chopra. <laughs> deep pants Chopra. Yes. <laughs> that guy's full of shit, man. Jesus Christ. Oh, pardon him. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, what? Is that, where does it say that? Oh, pardon him? What, no. Is that a deep patch quote? Who's the guy that uh, got pardoned that had a similar name? Um, recently, Dinesh. Oh, Dinesh Souza. Yeah, that yeah. guy's even way. He's way worse than Deep. And Deepak Chopra's just a you know, just yep. you know, sells 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 a uh, hope. You know. Um. All right. Guru should not be rich. If you're a rich guru, you're a fucking scam artist. Okay. Uh-huh. I have said it out loud. Finally, James. Um. All right. Uh. All right. Uh. So yeah, we got some. This is him. This is the loop repeating kind of thing where he gets mm-hmm. the. You know, he's killing Davy Crockett there with the hat and uh, you know stabbing guys and cutting heads off and stuff. But he's sort of you know his awakening. Okay. Is, is well, this is actually kind of important here because I theorized earlier that it was always this man's blood that was on his face, but now the blood is already on his face and yet mm-hmm. he has not yet killed this man. Right. Good so point. it serves a reason that maybe he gets it from other places aside from this particular man. Maybe yeah. he changes up his style a little bit now and then. Or maybe he since said, hey, this blood looks good on my face. Perhaps I shall emulate it with makeup before I leave the the, the TP. It it seems so. Or he's got pig blood or something. I mean, the animal yeah, blood. Or, you know, human blood is, is like, uh, you know, that's like um, expensive. Yeah. You know, that's like Whole Foods like yeah. celery, you know. Um, so... Uh, yeah, plus you need a lot of it to get your whole neck like that. Um, looks good. So, uh, anyway, yeah, he, but he lets this guy go here. He chooses not to kill him. Right. This is him kind of... To, to but he does him. give the order to his guy to finish him. True. <laughs> That's finish true. him. So, Fatality. Fatality. <laughs> James has been playing Mortal Kombat, guys. Oh, yeah. He's going to share some hot tips later. Yep. Um, so, Button mash and can't lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all the only hot tip you need. Oh, boy, I could say, okay. Um, all, right. all right, so, yeah, he walks away as his fella kills his uh, kills the other guy. So I guess that's not much of a mercy. So here's that tree So the again. same shot that he, you saw before, only mm-hmm. this time the horse does not have a rider on it. Right, although he's walking, someone's leading the horse there. But he's, he does have the staples on his butt. Got the staples, the CCC, he's going for it. Uh, back to the area, the dune space, and um, checking stuff out. So the, so the reason he doesn't kill the man is because his mind is still kind of engaged and wondering what the fate of that particular man was. Mm-hmm. The man that gave him the words that opened his mind, that cracked that door of wonder open for him. Right. So he goes back and seeks out the man again Yeah. to seek the newcomer. Yes, exactly. To find out more about this door and what and, it all means. And what it all means. He's on a mission. He's been, and he does discover he, you know, he, his instincts are correct or mm-hmm. something's drawn him here perhaps. Um, that uh, there's a whole thing going on. Now this must be just mind blowing to a, a host. Uh, now how come you think he doesn't? It doesn't look like anything to him. Like why doesn't it that move where it's just not register in his robot head? Well, I, I think what happens in this case is that he's never intended to go out this far from his base. He's exhibiting aberrant behavior at this point. Yeah. He's come to an awakening that that his curiosity is causing him to exceed his own boundaries. Mm. So they probably didn't feel it was necessary to spend the time to program in something like this because it was never intended to happen. Okay. 
Yeah, all right. I like that. I, I'll go. I agree. Let's I mean, go with it's it. a little bit different with Bernard because Bernard is in a whole area where he's prone to see all sorts of things he shouldn't be seeing. True. Good point. Yeah, Bernard has to have a stronger kind of firewall against that yeah. stuff, perhaps. Uh, now, yeah, they really show this the scene here. It's kind of neat. You know, they got the and from his stuff. perspective, from his spiritual perspective, he doesn't look at this and see uh, this is some sort of industrial complex. Right. He sees it as a passage to another world, a right. whole different place, and there's the door. The door. Uh, I mean, this is all a door. I mean, or is, well, no, is it this, symbolic? This is the door? the door. This is the door. Yeah, just one door down. Okay. All yeah, right. I mean, basically, yeah, almost, I it's almost representative of the underworld, the netherworld, Hades. Yeah, yeah. Because he rep okay. because the people we find out later in this episode that even when we were at Fort Forlorn Hope a while ago in one of the earlier episodes, they referenced uh, they're coming. I saw them. They came from below. They came mm -hmm. from underground. That's how they always operate because they have all their tunnels and their facilities are underground in Westworld. Yeah. So it's sort of like a, like a religious thing to them at this point where they see these weird creatures and these weird white suits emerging from underground. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the whole different world. It, it's, it's like Egyptian mythology almost, Egyptian religion. Yeah. Separate separate realms yeah. populated by different gods and people and stuff. Uh, well, how for, for scary? That's a scary thought to think yeah. like some lady with an iPad can pop out of a tree and just start following you around, going, mm -hmm. beep, 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 and then all of a sudden you're really horny or something. Well, and you think about it, and in season one, when you see the Lakota walking through Sweetwater, and, mm -hmm. and one of them has that doll that's shaped and made to look just like one of the tech guys. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. They, they developed kind of a. There's a mythology around this yeah. where they built a religion around it. Yeah. Yeah, those uh, yeah, those dolls were pretty creepy. Um, so anyway, this guy's pretty intrigued by what he sees, and obviously that'd be a pretty uh, stunning thing for anybody to see if you had never seen metal before. Mm -hmm. He's got blades and you know he's murdered a bunch. He's seen a lot of metal. Okay. So now he 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 sees what he believes to be the door, the way out mm -hmm. to get out of this world that does not encompass he's, he's where the they exit. belong. Yeah. He's basically saying this world I don't belong in. There's only one thing in this world that I care about, that I love, that I need to bring with me should I escape Fuck. from this particular Shit. world. Sorry, I have spilled seltzer water on fucking god damn. It's just water though, right? Yeah, like I'm I know. stained. I know, but my, my thigh is sensitive to temperature changes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was being I was going slow and it still no, straight no. out. That's what she said. Not my <laughs> <laughs> but anyway sometimes they like it slow no. he is going back to the village that he used to live in in order to acquire the company of the woman that he loved the woman that he was with in his prior life who he remembers yeah though she does not remember him so right. he's taking a big risk here so he reads the pickup artist and he's yeah. on, on his way to the ultimate neg and he heads into her their tent breaks into her house <laughs> sneaks up to her while she's sleeping not recommended. This is not yeah. an appropriate way to date. No, You're it, supposed it, to ask yeah. and say, "Let's go get go get a coffee. Maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll you know have dinner." And even said on the outside, this tent is protected by ADT. But yeah, he is brave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there was a, no there was no sock on the knob, so they yeah. knew that they were sleeping. Um, all right, there's some fur, and there's a woman. Speaking of fur, she's got fur on her hair. That's hair is fur. Mm -hmm. Do you think of your hair as fur? No. Do you think it's weird to call it fur? Yes. Why? <laughs> Right, we're mammals. Do gorillas have fur? Yes. Do do chimps? Yes. And so do humans. It's... They are our friends. They are our cousins. Mm -hmm. our, our simian brothers and sisters, and we're all very fairy hair. We just have little tiny hairs. <laughs> Even women have hairs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Astute observation. Well, I mean, like below their heads. Yes. That's... Yeah. All right. So uh, anyway, so he, he uh, takes Kohana and. Um, Steals her, just grabs her. That's uh. He has to do it quietly, though, right? Because so, he's essentially a terrifying-looking subject who is yeah. not native to the village, as far as she knows. Yeah, he should. And he's taking it with him. He could have put on like a friendlier mask or something. You know, maybe she wouldn't be so panicked mm -hmm. when she saw him. So anyway, a horsey drives by, and we got a little bird flying over there. That's pretty fun. And off they go. They're into a thing. This is him washing his hands. Right. He's he's trying to basically at this point he's trying to shed the life that he has been given, yeah. shed his new narrative to become the man that he once was, so he can be the man that she remembers. Right. That, right. Or the man that she could remember. Right. So he's got to rinse off this uh, white out, uh, white out would be uh, whatever dusty makeup, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so wow, look at that cave. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. Do you want to go camping with me in Arizona? Yeah, as long as we can bring a house with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At yeah, the Best Western. Yeah. <laughs> um, luxury. All right, so there, yeah, anyway, anyway there he is yeah, in mid-face mid, mid face wash. This is what everybody who works in L.A. looks like at about right before bed. Um, you know, um, that's, I don't know. Uh -huh. I, I mean, everybody's wearing makeup. Oh, just, oh, I got you. It made no sense. It, I, every, another one of my major regrets. Um, look at these rock things. Isn't that cool? I love geology. Yep. 
This different. one goes these ways, and this one goes that way. That's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, Every rock formation tells a story millions of years in the making. Of a forces beyond our comprehension. Well, we, we, we do know how it happens. <laughs> I don't have any idea. I, well, I, I don't know personally, but I know that scientists and geologists uh, do know. Jesus. It was Jesus. Jesus doesn't know. Yeah. He, he, didn't, he really Just, didn't know. Jesus did a crunch, and his yeah. abs formed, and lo, therefore, rocks were angled. No, it's because mm. of tectonic forces, of course. We all know that. But it's also fucking awesome. A lot. Come I, on. I, I was talking more like the erosion and and the different layers, the stratification and stuff like that. Oh. Not not the fact that they have erupted from the ground or mountains and tectonic plate movement, but oh, more yeah. like how the, the outward appearance of them has been shaped by time and wind and rain. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For indeed, the greatest sculptor of all is wind and mm -hmm. water and uh, men, men with tools. <laughs> yes. But no, the angles are amazing. You know, when like shit all, everything's angled, it's because of the, the plates pressing up against each other. That's how it all, you know. Not that you're disagreeing with that, mm -hmm. just that I find that quite cool. Um, all right, so there he is, putting his knife, uh, pulls his knife out. He's like, hey, careful, I'm not going to, it's okay, it's okay. And then he reaches in, and he grabs the thing. I'm always, this is the thing of mine that I dial in on. Whenever guys cut bound wrists, they're always so cavalier about it in, in movies. They always just get the knife in there real quick. It takes a lot. You'd have to go slow to do something like this safely. Not that they did that wrong in here, because what they did was they raised the camera, and you couldn't see him actually do the, do the knife move. He mm -hmm. grabbed it, so... I actually like that they did that because I hate it when they just nip it real quick. It's like, mm -hmm. really? That's not that. It's a risky move to put a knife between two, a person's hands, especially when they're shaking of fear. Yeah. All right, so he calls her a name, Koha, right? <laughs> he calls something. her her name. Yeah, her name, yeah, right? Um, so uh, it's Kohana, too, but maybe he's got a, like a short well, name. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's like how like, I have a cute nickname for you. Yes. You know what I mean, Jammy Poo? Mm, okay, okay. All right. Video Jammy so Poo. You, you, there's a moment of recognition there when he calls her that because it's not her full name, it's right. like a pet name. Yeah. Oh, right. Good point. Yeah, I love it. And then uh, she has, gets an emotion uh, there because of, uh, you know, she realizes this guy, by murder and kidnapping fiendish monster, is actually my old boyfriend. He didn't murder anyone. Well, I would assume if you get kidnapped, you're, you you think you're being murdered. That's well, he's, he's doing everything he can to put her at ease at this moment. Yeah, this is not the posture of a murderer right here. No. <laughs> the guy holding his heart going, mm -hmm. no, baby, I love you. Come on, please. Let's listen mm -hmm. to Pink Floyd. Um, yeah, so he grabs her hand and puts her her heart, and this is like a whole recognition thing going on here. They, they're, they're, they're bonded. These two have a, a sacred uh, heartbeat that they share, and then that's where they go. Also, remember Sakura? This refers to the Shogun world where she took her heart. Remember? She walked around with her heart for the whole episode. I don't think that's quite what this means. James, so the important thing I took here, English class in yeah. high school, and I knew how to bullshit my way through that stuff. Yeah, but that, so the most on. important part of this entire scene, though, is oh, the right. prior shot. Oh, what? Right here? Where he says, take my heart when you go. Yeah. And that's the one thing that triggers her memory, where she responds in like with, take, take mine. mine in its place. Mm -hmm. And that shows that her memory is returned. She knows who he is. She knows who she is. She remembers the life they once shared together. But isn't, wait a minute. This is the logic of this doesn't make any sense. If he says, take my heart when you go... And then she goes, no, take my heart in its place. She's saying, I'm just going to take my own heart. Right? He's suggesting, like if I had a burger, James, take my burger, and then you go, no, I'll take my burger. Well, no, it's basically, it's, it's a way of saying that their hearts the, are the same. They always will be together. It's essentially, it's like, oh, I, right. I will leave, but I leave, when I leave this place, I leave my heart with you because my heart belongs to you. Oh. And she says, well, when you leave, you take my heart with you for my heart also belongs to you. Well, I am, I am inspired to write poetry. Just mm -hmm. like Jack and Rose, yes. my two favorite. Do you think we, in, in Titanic when she throws the diamond off the back of the boat that it lands on a skeleton down at the bottom of the ocean? Well, That's no. the whole point of it. That's why she got rid of the heart of the sea. Come on. There are no skeletons down there now. They've all been evaporated. He was very determined. Okay. Yep. Uh, I saw that three times, and I was like a teenager. <laughs> mm. <laughs> all right. It was such a good movie. Oh, man. Mm. Oh, I wept. Yes. I wept. Um, all right, so I like your choker, by the way. Chokers, I think they're in this season. Um, look at them. Happy couple. Everything's yep. everything's great again. So they go walking off and, um, you know, off into the sunset. It's quite a lovely quite a lovely scene, isn't it? Look at that, James. Come on, heaven. Heaven is a place that you would die in a few hours. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, the cinematography in this episode is great. I like that they kind of took their yeah. time. I think they sort of matched the tone of the language, the, the Lakota language which has its own pace that is very um deliberate and i think that they they kind of match that a little bit with the way they yeah uh, produce so it. now he's been reunited with Kona, 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 yeah and his next 
basically the task is to find the door to escape from this world to, to return to where he was happy right taking her to the thing and he wants to get out of here so yeah this is what you do when you're in a college you hate and you have your girlfriend and you're like let's go to you know seattle so uh there's a horse and there's a thing and there's a nice flyover shot a into... horse and a thing <laughs> well these are things you know these things a shape a, a mesa a view mm-hmm. a um something um so yeah i like this so i like this i wish this was like a dinosaur that stood up it's got like a back of a ridge of uh, spikes and stuff that... your mind goes weird places but i like it yeah oh uh, wow quote uh, that no <laughs> put I, that on a t-shirt james now, likes it james likes I, I, I like the idea of it All right, rising up and it's a giant it's rock a, dinosaur don't worry i'll forget in a few minutes it's fine i have <laughs> okay uh fire crackling great slow motion fire is fun mm. so it's um so uh yeah i won't okay really want to read that, that, that I've been well, shamed this, into not this is so many, this is a further confirmation that she remembers the extent of their relationship together mm-hmm. yep they're, they're getting back to it this is them having a little nighttime uh, you know talking session and stuff with maybe a kiss or two right so he says that they want to go to a place where the memories won't be falsified for them where they can't be taken over where they can't be reprogrammed where they can't be separated from one another again by forces that they have yet to understand right right um, but they discovered us again. So what is that, a dead rabbit or mm-hmm. something? Yeah, we got a bunch of rabbits. So he's off to get dinner. He go. He went off to, you know, um, the, you know, the... B- Hunt. Be- <laughs> beverage Depot. <laughs> that's the only story I can think of. Uh, Binnie's, that's it. That's the one. All right, anyway, so he sees something that horrifies him. It's a dudes with a car. This is not the kind of horse he's used to seeing. But not so much them, the fact that they have... Well, that too. Kohana. They have Kohana. They're taking her away. She's being led into a thing that he doesn't recognize. What a terror. What a, yeah, what a the nightmare. Whole, the reason they did that is because they're so far off the grid from where they should be that it triggered an alert for them. Right. Yeah. So they didn't necessarily find him, but they found her because she was back at home. Yeah. They've deactivated her to an extent, so she's kind of... Yeah. You know, dead. This is like Minnie Mouse escaped Disney World and they found her at a Rite Aid looking at the condoms or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're not supposed to get anywhere near. Oh, God, get out of here. So anyway, look at these guys. This is their religion. Or not religion, but the, the doll model. Well, yeah. There's, they're, so they've been seen. Um, <laughs> I do like the little Westworld symbol on the car. I don't know yeah, right. I'm a little shocked that he didn't jump on his horse and give chase, though, considering how much he loves this woman. Yeah, that would probably seem like the kind of thing a heroic guy would do, but also... But it's almost as though he's... he's do you think it's from a spiritual perspective, he saw this as the will of the gods? Mm. And that he has no place to question it? No. Uh, because he certainly takes action to question it later on. I think a more plausible reason is he just could tell that that thing is a lot faster than a horse, maybe. I don't know. But I you'd mean, think he'd still try. Like, yeah, I mean, if know, it were me, I'd try. Yeah, like if a tank is coming at me and I got a bow and arrow, I'm going to aim mm-hmm. and shoot it right down the barrel of the mm-hmm. tank, and it's going to hit the gunner guy in the in the, in the the eye. Because that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come on, I got it all figured out. I'm ready for the apocalypse. I got a gallon of water in the closet. Mm-hmm. You, are you prepared for earthquakes, by the way? Do earthquakes? Think yeah, oh, we yeah. live in LA. What's yeah. your earthquake plan? Um, Run around screaming, looking for me. Don't fall down. I will dig you out of the rubble. I will make you that sacred yeah, promise. There won't be any rubble. What do you mean there won't be any rubble? We're, we're overdue for the big one. I have a gallon of water in my closet. We'll, we'll survive off that. These buildings and are built to code. We're fine. Yeah, no, LA buildings do stand up. It's, if well. you're in a different country, like a third world country, then you're right. in a lot of trouble. I mean, that's an hey, earthquake like, is death. Out hey, here, we're pretty much... Yeah. Hey, unless you're under an overpass that's structurally right. unsound. As annoying as building codes and regulations might be, uh, I'd rather be in an L.A. building than a Haitian building. Yes. And, and I'm not trying to knock the Haitians. I'm just saying that they're, they didn't have the same code and an earthquake devastated and just flattened mm-hmm. a lot of buildings. So that's a... Yeah, I don't sometimes know. it takes it's, it makes sense to take our time and build the buildings correctly or some, yeah. with, with some intelligence. So, uh, so essentially anyway, what happens here, note. Yeah, here is that he sees that they took her away mm-hmm. and he goes back to the village because he's hoping that they sent her home. Right. So he's going back to the village that he wasn't necessarily a part of, the one that he stole her from in a sense. Yeah. And he sneaks back into the tent to where she would be yeah. and he finds a ghost, as he refers, someone who is... Essentially, the invasion of the body snatchers. Someone who has replaced her that people recognize as being her, but that he retains memories where he knows that's not her. Right. right. So this is like a terrifying horror movie at this point. Yeah. For him. Yeah. I mean, they could almost take any one of these plot lines and kind of make a movie about yeah. how scary this whole thing would be. Um, and you think, is it, you have to wonder, am I the one going crazy or is everyone else going crazy? Is right. this uh, an imposter? I mean, what's going on? Now, is go- ghost is an interesting choice of words there. And, and it also speaks to, they're called the ghost nation, They're mm-hmm. which kind of, I like that they call them a ghost when they find the new, the mm-hmm. replacement model, um, because that gives the term ghost nation some meaning to it more. You know, yeah. it's, it, mean, it, it, it injects a story into the definition of that, of that phrase, mm-hmm. which I appreciate. 
Um, there's a woman's head being cut off by the camera. Uh, so this is, what is he having memories and stuff? Thinking about his girlfriend, I think. Or no, no that's the, the new ghost, I think. He's staring at her going, I don't, I don't know, whatever. Who cares? It doesn't, uh, why am I doing this? Um, so anyway, back to the, talking to uh, Maeve's daughter. I saw their, their lives and they're, uh, you know, I'm not going to, you know, what journey does, I don't know. What journey is he talking about? The band? No, the, the, the journey to consciousness, the journey oh. to self-discovery, mm -hmm. to awareness. Good, good. Um, he's got like a swastika in his forehead, doesn't he? No, no, I know <laughs> it does go in different directions. I take that. I don't really. I wasn't suggesting that it's really a swat. Okay, all right. Uh, so we got some cool trees and stuff. I like an overhead shot because there's no dialogue for me to read and get confused about. Um, so this is him returning to the little grove where he brought her, right? And he's so now he's on a, a mission to find his lady, and he's right. going everywhere. He wants to. He goes into enemy territory. Goes into towns mm -hmm. where people are adversarial towards him. Yeah. He goes uh, dirty any, looks. He goes without fear across any part of the world he can in search of his lost love. Yeah, yeah, and uh, man, it is trouble. It is tough looking for uh, finding love in this this, this mm -hmm. difficult world. So yeah, even all the way to Sweetwater, which is kind of yep. kind of crazy and easy target. So he could be very—he's very. He's very oh, parasol. Mm -hmm. That's a nice one. Nice and dark. Nice and little. I like it. Um, so yeah, off he goes. Look at these guys. Look at this guy. Look at him. We gotta get up on the spittoon. Get it? Well, yeah. They're, they basically—you can assume that people like them, not necessarily them particularly. It could have been them, but yeah. people like of their mindset. Beat him up, nearly killed him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did some bad stuff. To we him. get a sense that they might, because then all of a sudden he's hurt and he's crawling around and he seems to be beat up. So yeah, so bad times here. Uh, but guess who? This explains now how she got the uh, uh, rock with the map right. on it or with the maze on it because she. This is Maeve's daughter, and she offers him a little sippy right. cup and, and he make, makes it makes it all okay. And he said something pretty important here: is that I feared that if I died, I would lose memory of her. Yeah. And we find out a little bit later in the episode that this particular character is on a very old version of firmware. He's on Alpha 2, which is about a decade old. He's never been updated. And we find out the reason he hasn't been updated is because he has never died. Yeah. And yeah. this kind of speaks to perhaps why he was able to awaken so much sooner than everyone else. That he had his mm. momentation, his reveries were basically building up because he never had a reset Right, yeah, sure. Like, he's just running DOS for so long. Yeah, I mean, his narrative yeah. had him being, the, like, the prime predator. He, there was no one else that would kill him. Right. So It's he, almost like... So, go ahead. No, he, he existed a lot longer in that current instance than other people had the opportunity to do so. Yeah, it's, it's almost like he they screwed up by making mm -hmm. him such a deadly guy. Because yeah. he can't... If he if you can't kill him, you can't update him, and then... Uh, so. well, I mean, they could update They could go out there and freeze him and update him if they wanted to. Right. They just didn't feel the need to do it. They said, basically, we're going to roll this update out, but we're just going to do it as they roll in, right. you know, in waves. And right. if you never roll in, then... Yeah, that, that disrupts their process. And, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, oh, you think there'd be, like, a timer, like, after five years, mm -hmm. come back in, kind of... Uh, anyway, there's a so this is this is that uh, bag of feathers. <laughs> mm -hmm. What a cool bag! You think it's got that structure built into the bag, or the feathers are that stuffed in there? I will never know. Yeah, it looks like one of those weird bombs from. Okay, uh, so um, you know he's just curious. You now he's back in his village and he's looking around, and people are starting to change. He's not the and, and he's not the only person noticing something going on. So now this, here's something that kind of contradicts what we were talking about before. Okay, he is still in the same narrative where he was the Ghost Nation warrior. Uh, he just took his makeup off. Okay. But he says, I came back to my village to find that my family was gone, which right. implies that he did live there, that he was native to that particular one, that he wasn't simply there trading. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you're right. Because okay. he's there at his place, and there's the same warriors with the paint on. So, was he not in the Ghost Nation group that showed up with the boar at the beginning? Is that maybe the thing? That, well, he that, was. That was a separate... You think this is a separate town? No, I'm, I'm saying maybe the first, when the Ghost Nations came to trade... The first time we saw the boar in the, the bag of feathers, that he uh, he might not have been in that group. I don't no, maybe know. not. Or maybe he's just repurposed himself by his own choosing. Because here he's a member of the village again, yeah. and the Ghost Nation is basically uh, coming to do their trading, as you said. Right. Yeah, it seems like that. Um, so you think that they would notice? It's like, hey, this guy, uh, you know, used to be with us, but now he's native right. to this town. Yeah, Why old, is no one old Grandpa Akachete over here is acting all weird, dressing up like a clown, going yeah. down to the Third Street Promenade. But aside aside from all that, he uh -huh. says that something else important is that he's not the only one who's aware of these replacements that are happening. Right. He sees a recognition in the the face of others. It's becoming alarming. Ooh, side boob. 
I'm joking. Um, so, uh, yeah, so now they are getting their ghost. It's yeah, I believe the it's, whole ghost town. It's her son who has been repurposed, who was changed out for another person. Yes, yes, yes. There was a young guy, a young man that um, seemed to um, be different now. So uh, that even happened again. Is this, is this a repeat? Yeah, it's a so, flashback, I think, where he says okay. they've changed them. Okay. And she references they. Yes. And they're trying to find out who are they, and he references them as the ones below. Because they just... know that they come from the, the netherworld, the underworld. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing about have you seen them? Yes, some of the people have seen them, and this is how the whole mythology gets born of them, why they start making figures in their image, and right. why they start worshipping them and praying to have be visited by them, their deities in their mind. So they've interpreted it as a positive thing if they're hoping to be visited. So yes. somehow it's... Because it could easily have been interpreted in a negative way, like it's a terror or something that's haunting them. Right, but I mean, generally the people who have encountered them don't remember it because they were taken. Right. So it's only a very select few who have this sort of religious interpretation of it yeah. that they've been passing along. Maybe they just like waking up with the whole, just a, a new person. Like they didn't mm -hmm. like their old friends. They're like, yeah. oh, you're a little bit different. All right, cool. Uh, anyway, so we're living the loop where he murders Davy Crockett. <laughs> anyway, uh, hit right in the heart. That's a good, that's a good stab spot, right? Um, so... Take that guy, and there's another that's the dab, um, and down he goes. Sorry, mustache face, you're done. And uh, but he had a, he knew what to do. This is this is in his his in his own. Yes. He's figuring it all out. So it's too much making yeah. sense. He realizes that if these people come from down below, and that if they take people and replace them, and they take them down below with them, and some people never return, that if his love went down there and didn't return, that he has to descend into hell itself, descend yeah. into Hades, into the underworld, to find her, like, like again, like Dante in his quest yes. for, was it Priscilla? I thought he was looking for an inferno. No, I, I can't remember what the name of the woman that he was uh, seeking was, but it was something like that. Let us know in the comments below, everybody. Tweet James at there. You probably mm -hmm. have 70-something Twitter followers. Yeah. You, have, you have a really nice base for someone who doesn't tweet at all. You've yeah. done three. I know, I know you've done a few, but... We're on Tweet Count. Tweet nice. Watch with James. Will he tweet again? <laughs> Tune in tonight at 9 after the weather. Um, all right. Um, so, okay. he so anyway, these, uh, these, these are probably tourists, I imagine. Cause well, he approaches dead. them knowing that they're going to kill him. Yeah, yeah. But he's like, yeah, he, he lets them kill him because that's his yeah. way out. That's uh, the exit that he's looking for to find his, his girlfriend. So anyway, nice stabby stab. What, who, 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 what kind of vacation is this? Just killing a guy? Well, we don't know yeah, that those yeah. are guests. We, we could presume that they're probably, they could be hosts. I'm, I'll, I'll explain my know. rationale. Everybody else is dead except them. I assume that means that they, you know, why, you know, I don't oh, know. Oh, good point. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my thought, thinking there. But maybe, no, that, maybe that, just decide to let them, you know. That's a pretty compelling argument. Yeah, plus they're not that tan, so they're yeah. probably guests. So anyway, there, there he is taking it like a champ. <laughs> nice puncture's body. Mm -hmm. um, so he's found, he's looking, and now he's traveling to the other side of death. And speaking of death... Death is being uh, waking up in a dentist office with naked people. Mm -hmm. um, so we got text talking. Oh man, this is nuts. What's this? So this lady's kind of like a like a like a supervisor type, you know. Just so they want to see what's going on with this guy. And this is where we find out that it's been a long time, right? Yeah. Now when he says it's him, mm -hmm. a Ketchita ghost nation, they say that almost with surprise, as though they don't remember, you know. The last time they yeah. saw him. So cowboy control. His Faction narrative is cowboy control. I like yeah. that. That's cool. Uh, def default sector 21. And he was uh, found in sector 23, which shows that he was outside of his grid. He didn't yeah. belong there. Yep. Hierarchy leadership. That's okay. nice. Uh, post Postmortem repairs, knife wounds, and gunshots, comma gunshots. Reason for recall, premortem aberrant behavior. Yep. That's, uh, that describes my life. Um, yeah, so like you said, th this is essentially where they find out that he's never died before. Therefore, he's still in the Alpha 2 build. Right, which I think is a very cool detail. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the aberrant behavior talking, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Whoa, this guy's alpha too. That's nuts. She's like, wait, really? It's been a decade. That's crazy. See, this is this guy had one line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just remember. That. I just noticed that. That was funny. Um, but yeah. So uh, give him the update. So we we'll put him back. So why were why were the texts like no? What are you? Because they didn't. Why quiet? What are they doing wrong here? It sounds like they're trying to hide this this decision. Well, because the, they're part of behavior, I assume. So you don't want to basically highlight when your product, where the they, thing you're responsible for maintaining, is exhibiting aberrant behavior. You just want to basically say, fix it, update them so this crap doesn't happen again, get them back out there and keep it quiet. We don't want to raise any flags that people can question the quality of our work. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Well done. Very persuasive. Thank you very much. Uh, tech size. <laughs> um, so anyway, they're uh, ready to get out there and have me. Boy, what's, I wonder what's wrong with his head. I can hear much of that. Look, James, they blurred the black boxes. Yes. That's called 
uh, wasting time before doing the recordings. And so what happens here is that he wakes up on his own accord. Do you think he mm -hmm. was simply faking being, you know, dead? Uh, I imagine so. Oh, he, doesn't one... like, he doesn't have the power to wake himself up. He doesn't have that kind of control. So it almost yeah. seems like he was stoic enough to kind of... Could be, could be. Because um, this is him. They weren't really pro poking and prodding much, though. Were no, they? It, yeah. this. I mean, this is a little bit confusing to me because you would think that the first thing they would do is they would run some sort of diagnostic on him that would freeze his motor functions. Right. So how could he be free to get up and move around like this? Could it be? And I sound like the Oak Island narrator, <laughs> but could it be that because he's on Alpha Two that the current commands don't work on him? Could it be that that's why currently to the present day when Maeve tried to interface with them, it didn't work because mm -hmm. his firmware was so old that it didn't work with her modern commands. Oh, wow. And that he was yeah. faking being under their control. Right. Like trying to trying to use Windows 95. Could be. Um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. It could have. Yeah. Very, very well could be. But he basically gets up and starts having his run of the mill. He, he the, goes around well, the real, whole place. Real quick, though. They, they, one guy goes, it'll take four hours. We'll come back after yeah. lunch. So that... That explains why he's not. They, he, he's he's alone here. So. And it also explains that they take four-hour lunches, which is a very nice place to work. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> it sounds great. So off he goes. He doesn't seem like oh, oh, what the, the no no. He's he, he's a warrior. He's, he's a stoic warrior. He has now yeah. made his journey into the underworld, and yeah. now he is searching for his love in hell. Basically, yeah, he's very nonplussed about this whole yeah. place here. I mean, so. this is this is an epic journey in his mm -hmm. spiritual path. What a wild thing! No wonder people will, you know make up religion and stuff because mm -hmm. you'd be like, oh yeah, well, I had a weird dream mm -hmm. and I was in Delos, and then all of a sudden you can write a book. Yeah. Uh, so he's wandering around the, you know, it's pretty cool. This shot was great. I really like this. I just think it was just interesting in a way. You think that uh, he'd show more wonder at an escalator though, that he would look around and be like, my feet are not moving yet. I am moving. <laughs> or just like he'd like uh, tentatively approach it and just yep. struggle with it like Borat or It'd something. It'd be funny if he came to an elevator and he just impatiently kept tapping the button mm -hmm. as if he knew what one was and how to behave around one. <laughs> yeah. So, well, what a place to explore for the first time, seeing mm -hmm. something completely different. And he's descending, which is indicative yep. of his path into hell. Yes. Which hell is run by goats. Goats, the symbol of Satan. It is. Yeah. Exactly. And I think it's unfair, because if you ever meet a goat, and this is probably a ram, they are adorable, mm -hmm. inquisitive, delightful creatures. They're very nimble, and they are, su they are surprising in the greatest way. Well, they will headbutt the crap out of you, though. Yes, they will, which is hilarious. There's a video of a goat or a sheep which are like, you know, goats with jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, boom, nailed a guy who was standing by water and pushed him into the water. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, I always cheer when the animals fight back. Um, so that's cool. I love this. I love Rams. So these things are fun. Look at this guy. Look at that cool thing. St. Louis Rams. Great, great team. All right. So uh, look at this. James Delos. This is the one of the original probably... One just, of the abandoned floors. Abandoned or floors. One of, or one of the floors that presumably at this point in time is under construction, maybe? Right. Right. Do you because think at what timeline same? was this happening in? We well, don't really know. It's hard to say. Uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, what, there's the text. We've seen tech. We have new texts like the redhead, this lady how, here. Yeah, red, I guess the question lady. is, how long um, has it been since his love was taken from him? How long has it been? Um, I get the sense quite a while because he was traveling quite a bit. He went mm -hmm. to different towns, the Sweetwater, so it's been some time. Yeah. Um, There's really no frame of reference, though, for how long ago it's been. Right. So it's hard to say at what's, if this is an abandoned floor, if this is a floor in construction, I don't quite know for I'm sure. I'm going, well, we know he's heading towards cold storage, yeah. so I'm going with abandoned, and I'm just curious, if this, is this the same uh, welcome, uh, you know, center vestibule or something? Where William and Logan show up in the in the first season it could be that's where we meet, we meet Angela yeah. for the first time too. So um, hmm, I don't know, but anyway, so Westworld and there he goes. He, he walks by this uh, globe thing, looking, staring right yeah. through the work or Earth mm -hmm. as if he is in. No, I'm I'm not trying to do. Um, so finds the room with cold storage now. Just uh, hopefully, I blocked out all the all the uh, sinful bits. And this um, is almost like finding souls in purgatory in hell itself, right? Where he goes in to retrieve and yeah. find the lost people. Yes, this is Satan's pantry. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that I had to block off, but not the disgusting belly button. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that thing. Come on, it looks like, looks like, like it was in a golfing accident. That's ridiculous. Uh, oh, shoot, I didn't pilot that one. But, um, yeah, so everybody, uh, yeah, he's wandering through. This is creepy. Is this weird? When I want, I'd love to be on set and watch this, you know, see how this all goes down. I don't down. know if I would dig that. Yeah, well, maybe I wouldn't love that. It'd probably be awkward and weird. Look at this belly button. Look at that. It's poking out. 
He could be a great um, uh, track and field star because he'd cross the finish line first. No, get up. You know what I mean? He's got. He's just got. And and it's the old man by belly button. Announcer voice, James. All right. All right. Up. Oh, look, there he is, looking, walking by people, uh, getting into the into the uh, deeper and deeper yeah, into the place. Looking for Konaha. Ko- Kohana, 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 and there I'm, she is. I'm you... thinking of the the village from Naruto, Konaha. <laughs> What's Naruto? What seriously? The show? Yes, it's been around for like. What channels are on? ABC. I never I'm seen it. Stab you with this Coke CW? bottle. <laughs> okay, you just swing hard. Just, just make it one stab, please. Um, Moana. That was stars the rock. Um, there, yeah. So anyway, he finds his lady. She's there. She's standing there naked. Not a good position to find a loved one, by the way, when she's all catatonic in a room full of, uh, you know, chilly robots. So uh, this is a sad moment for him. He's like, oh, man, look what they did to you. But he wants to rescue her, take her. Mm -hmm. Yep. But he finds out that she's not really there. It's just a shell of a person. Right. That her soul is essentially gone. She's very unresponsive and uh, devastating. Must be tough. And And at this moment, he realizes that his pain here is what he describes as selfish. And he says it's selfish because I'm sitting here exhibiting my own grief at that which I've lost, yet everyone who stands around me here represents someone else who has been lost, Mm -hmm. who who is being grieved for by someone else. And he sees the woman from the village. This is her son. Yeah. Yeah. And that who has been replaced. Yes, and a key detail is this lock of hair mm-hmm. that is presented very front and center for everybody mm-hmm. to notice. I didn't notice it until just now. But, uh, yeah, at least he's got veins in his I like that they painted these veins on these guys. It's just sort of, I guess that, you know. I don't know makes painted? Sense. Well, these are actors with drawn. I, mean, I don't think this actor has this kind of vein. Why not? Work because that's weird. All of them have it. Most humans, some people you can see like blue and stuff yeah. veins under their chest or bulging veins in certain spots. I'm, I'm saying this is makeup for the show is all I'm saying. All right. Yeah. Unless it's on his resume. Like, that's like his headshot is his weird chest. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, I had to block this stuff. Sorry, I can't read everybody. So, but the guy's there. He's uh, in, uh, you know, so off he, he's walking by. Um, by the way, this is for Zach Galifianakis World, their upcoming theme park. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um and gets back on this table. Doesn't want to. As let though nothing in. happened. As though nothing happened. And I think I don't know if it was you who mentioned when we were watching. Mm-hmm. It was like, do they not have security? Do they not have security cameras? People yeah. did not notice that this guy was just wandering around. Yes, it it would be strange that they you think there would be some kind of thing. A pressure mm-hmm. plate on the chair, maybe. No, that's kind of dumb. Yeah. But uh, they just bolt him down like they do to <laughs> Peter <laughs> Abernathy. <laughs> Uh, his eye makeup is great because he cried and it is still there. Look at that. No, what is he? Water f- what is he? Ray Lewis? Mm-hmm. Um, that's a football reference, James. Oh. They, they wear like really thick. Still, football player guys wear really no, thick good. face paint. Um, all right. So anyway, he ends up back. He gets updated, presumably. Um, yeah, he's returned back to the park. Mm-hmm. Actually, I mean, I guess you can assume he did get updated because they wouldn't have put him back into commission without doing that. Which doesn't really right. explain much in regards as to why Maeve still can't control him, other than the fact that maybe Ford did something much later on, or you know. It's also plausible that his update didn't take because he got up, or because he was more conscious than they thought when they did it. Maybe, and maybe that was the point of the red. He unplugged lady. his USB. Yeah, 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 like yeah, he like uh, yeah, yeah, he kicked the router like I do when mm-hmm. I get upset at the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Uh, there's a um, you know he's talking about getting their people back but they can't they're all stuck in this this this, uh, this uh, body storage place but he knows what to do he's got a plan and how to get everybody out mm-hmm. right I yep. don't know. Okay. he wants to save and he does a, a kindness mm-hmm. to her basically says here's a lock of your son's hair he was down there I could not save him but yeah. he exists you're not crazy yes yes would you like a lock of my hair I could give you one take quite a long time to get well I did just uh, trim my you know the longest hairs in my body, so it's going to be a few, be a few weeks. By my nose, mm-hmm. oh man, the uh, the highways of L.A. are littered with my nose hairs. I, mm-hmm. I, I yank them out and I tear up and I, I whip them out the window and hope that they don't blow back into the car. Mm-hmm. Um, these are literally the things I think about in my life, James. So uh, there he goes. Uh, he's you know she cr- she crumples down and he's like, oh, I'll help you. You know here I'm you know I'm the guy. Don't worry about it. Everything's good. Not so good for Maeve. She's been turned into ribs. Um, not looking at this tough time here. Yeah, so she's and, basically been flayed by this guy. She's yeah. not really in a position where she's being put back together. And mm-hmm. at this point, Lee Sizemore kind of realizes that, that this guy is not looking out for her best interest. And he's trying to communicate whether he has an affinity for her now. He yeah. sees her as a human being almost. He says, essentially, that you don't deserve this. You deserve better than this. You deserve to be with your daughter, to teach her to love, and to 
thrive and to flourish. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of done a whole 180. He's this guy in the beginning who's like, oh, well, you're no one. You're not really a real person. The lines that you're speaking are ones that I've written for you. You do what I say that you should do because I've written your destiny. Yeah. yeah. And now he's completely changed here. Yeah, we see some real character development here. This is what's called, yeah. what we call an emotional arc, mm -hmm. and he's reached the end of it. Oh, we'll see. Uh, maybe he'll turn back to being a dickhead later. No, but yes, he's now Lee cares more or Lee mm -hmm. size less. I guess, uh, depending. Uh, uh -huh. I don't know. Um, so he's, oh, your daughter, you got to get your daughter. So he's really bought into it. I mean, not uh -huh. not in a bad way, but like he's, yeah. he's, he's on Team Maeve, hashtag Team Maeve. And um, he wants to just ex ex you know, extend love. I think he's been a little uh, changed by all the stress he's been uh -huh. under and probably for the better. Yeah, and then the tech guy comes and gets Yeah, hey, out. get out of here. Yeah, this guy's like, uh, yeah, dude, can't have you in here. Um, but he's really intrigued. This is sort of a higher up we, we gather. Uh -huh. he probably, you know, but as you sort of said earlier, um, sort of a supervisor perhaps but he's like intrigued by what he finds in Maeve he sees all this stuff in her that's uh, very fascinating and mm -hmm. even thanks him he's oh yeah I owe you like look you did us a good solid here there's some really good stuff going on with this, this, mm -hmm. this host so what are we you know um, but Lee Sizemore also realizes he's kind of has to say bye because he doesn't have control I mean it's not up to him mm -hmm. right there's, there's nothing else he can do here so and it's actually only up to Charlotte Hale so uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully Maeve doesn't have to uh, face the Charlotte. <laughs> yep. So anyway, that's uh, her. Her fate is so far uncertain. Um, this guy's uh, having a nice time. So now we're feeling good about this pairing. We're like, oh good. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, obviously, it was they made it. Uh, they did do a, quite a misdirection. This guy's a very gentle sort of yeah. guy, even though he's a marauder. And like I kind of spoiled at the beginning, we find out that he was never an adversary. He was. Yeah. He essentially what he did was he I like this what it says right here dedicating his life to sharing the symbol yes. why he painted on the rock why he gave it to her right and each time that he would come outside of the house and and may would basically fall back on the door and pull, point the gun at the door it was essentially him going outside and riding the symbol in the dirt outside the door it was a warning to them it was to educate them to share with them that there was danger out there that it was a mm -hmm. different world that there was more to this life than they possibly understood yeah. he watched over them he was a protector of them right yeah. What happens? Oh, yeah. So, so this is him spreading the word, though. This is the under the scalp thing that yeah. they do. So I guess maybe this speaks to what I was saying earlier. So this guy doesn't. He doesn't actually do the cut, but he he holds a knife to his head, to, as if to say, "Take the knife and do the rest of the work." And he goes up behind him and does it to him, like right here. Mm -hmm. So, um, still though, if you cut this off and then do the maze thing, and then fold it back over, there's going to be a little seam. He's not going to be able to make that perfect. So I don't know. Well, I'm the just, text do that. I know. I'm saying the text would notice the tattooed maze on the inside of his scalp. That's got to stand out. It's got to stand I, out. I don't see why they would There's, find any reason to patch it up if it's not visible. Oh No, but it's visible. Isn't that the whole point? It's on the inside. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's invisible. It says hide it from them. They, oh, no one sees it. So you're saying he opens it, scribbles it in there, closes it, and then they just they see it. They don't. The text don't reopen it, but they just fix up the scene yeah why were they why would they make a cosmetic change to something that's internal to the body no one's gonna see it yeah i know i'm just saying i think the text would have spotted that i, I don't know perhaps but, not though perhaps i guess maybe if only if it's a flapped open you know like when you have a piece of skin hanging off you know something. we know in the very in like season one when that first became the parent and the mm -hmm. text saw it they were like i've never seen anything like this before i don't know what this is right you yeah. know Lawrence had it, and it makes sense that Lawrence had it because Lawrence was in the same world as the Ghost Nation. At some yeah. point, he would have been killed and scalped, and they would have done that to him. Right. And there was a guy that the black, the man in black, did in very early in season mm -hmm. one, and yeah. so uh, I mean, he obviously did to multiple people. I guess is oh yeah, good point. So anyway, he's kind of been a protector of Maeve and, mm -hmm. and her daughter uh, for this time, as you said. Um, so um, this is and you think that when he a was big, a big twist, do you think that when he was doing it to his fellow Ghost Nation warrior, he was basically saying, "Is now your time to awaken? It's time for you to take your journey into the underworld." I suppose. I mean, but the message how is the message isn't for the guy who's got it on his scalp. The message is for whoever finds that, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's for everyone. Yeah, it's it's. But, it's it's you know it's I mean, part of his own awakening where he goes down to the underworld it's almost like a it's like a tattoo or remembrance a mark that you have made that journey but also for anyone else who ever you know creators or whatever they can find that as well it's pretty low uh low return advertising like yeah the direct mail is like one one percent might respond it doesn't make a huge amount of sense but yeah. it's it's more of a symbolic thing for them i sure. imagine that's true and years later maybe some tech will uh, slice their head mm -hmm. off <laughs> look at the top look at the underside of this it's much more effective if they just painted it on their body or something like yeah, that or, or it scratched tattooed, it, you know? yeah scraped it into the wall or scratched it into the dirt like he does yeah. um you know so anyway so this is the 
this basically summarized what the entire show has done with the Ghost Nation. Mm -hmm. Like we all thought their intentions were, well, first they seemed uh, malignant, malevolent, and then they seemed somewhat mysteriously benign, or at least selectively malevolent, 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 Melania. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, but uh, this is speaking to the context of how he cares for Maeve and her daughter. It's actually very powerful. He was looking out for him. It's it's we misunderstood the intentions there. So don't judge a book by his scary face paint. Mm-hmm. I guess is the message there. So as we remember this traumatic experience, because this is very sinister. The mm-hmm. shot here, Maeve and her daughter. It was actually not May. Uh, she you know they so rewind all the way back to when the first time this happens and Blatt did, and he crosses the window and the camera keeps uh, pan, panning I guess to the right. And then the man in black comes to the door, which made it seem like it all kind of happened in one moment, right? Mm-hmm. But it actually was more Maeve's memory injecting, um, mis- messing, mashing these two up together yep. a little bit, right? Yeah, and it, it's good in this I, case I, that she didn't live in a place like a normal neighborhood because it take a long time to use a lawnmower to cut that symbol in the front of a lawn. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah. So, so in, in fact, this is not the man in black showing up, as obviously does. But she comes outside and she sees this thing in the grass here, or in the in the lawn. That that takes a little work to do. You gotta just have buckets. He's had quite pull. a lot of practice, though. Yeah. He's written it for a long. We don't know how much longer he's been had to practice since he did this, right. but I presume it's been and, at least a decent amount of time. And, and the fact s- that he's a robot means he can be pretty precise. Well, that's true. Good point. Um, that, that explains why Urkel's such a good dancer. Uh, mm-hmm. But he's got to be careful where he steps and stuff. I, I just know I would screw that up. Mm-hmm. I'd get like a little bit of it right with some curves, and then it would just turn into like. You know something inappropriate mm-hmm. like a genital um so anyway we got the doll and the stuff and uh, we, the ghost said we should be scared so that's her relaying a message from the guy her friend mm-hmm. into the guy because she's wondering about what's this maze thing so they're both getting dialed into this maze not mm-hmm. just mave mave maze mave maze think about it james that will um so she's promising to be strong for her baby girl and that's what mothers do um which is really nice yeah right? but this is the point where he says that a mother could not keep that promise but why does he say you couldn't keep because he was talking, because he's speaking to Maeve the whole time. Right here? Did, what? He's talking to her. Doesn't he say this to the little girl? No, he's saying it to, Maeve is speaking to him. And we find out at the very end of the episode that, that, that she's on the table, but she's giving commands. She's having a conversation with him the whole time while he sits next to the daughter. She's making sure that he protects her. Wait, you're saying the daughter is, is being used by Maeve no, right now? No, no, no. Maeve is speaking to Akechita. Yeah. Oh. That was the big, big reveal at the very end. Oh, all right. We'll have to get there for me to reprocess that. Okay. So who's the you in this sentence? Maeve. So this whole time he's just talking next to the daughter? He's not Well, he's talking to kind of both of them. Okay. All right. Okay. She's speaking to him and he's kind of Mm -hmm. speaking back. All right. I'll go with it. She's very polite. She's just, Mm -hmm. well, she's a robot, I guess. Well, she doesn't understand what he's saying. What? She doesn't speak Lakota. How do you know that? I'm just making a joke. Oh. <laughs> I love humor. Yeah. Um, anyway, speaking of humor, there's a bald guy dying. Mm-hmm. Uh, jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. I'm not. Um, and uh, so, poor Maeve. Oh, man, look at the hair. That would mm-hmm. hurt. What if it really caught on that rough wood? That's no fun. Mm-hmm. Um, this is just scary. So, the man in black comes in. Now, this is trouble time, right, James? Yeah, this uh, actually legitimately These happened. are flashbacks to yep. the time, yeah. So, did he do this a lot, or this was a one-off? Was um, he going to go uh, murder yeah. a little girl, it, a woman? Hard, no, it's hard to say how many times he did it. We know he did it at least once. Yeah. yeah. And this was weird, because it said no audible scream, yet you could hear her scream. So yeah, it was really that kind was of weird. odd. No audible scream. It was kind of deflated, like the, you know, like the, woo, the world sort of, uh, the, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Where they yeah. sort of shift the they pitch the audio. But it was definitely weird. audible. It was audible. There was some serious hearing going on, and then they end up in here. Now this looks more carved than poured. So this is yeah. a new. This is like he'd upgraded the maze. Yeah, he it's really not the spent same maze some time on this one. Yeah, this one takes this a lot much of larger. Dragging your heel like through the sand. Yeah, no, up. he was out there with a tractor. Yeah, this takes this takes it a hoe. You need you need some tools to make something like that happen. But um, anyway. Classic shot shot from season one of the mom and the daughter in the in the maze and they're the heads and the you know, there's by camera mind something about listening to God and voices and stuff. So speaking of voices, crickets are up and they're talking. They're having a good time. They're going, Let's fuck, let's fuck, let's fuck. That's what all insects sound like. That's if, if insects had subtitles, it'd be that and it'd be I'm over here. I'm over here. Mm-hmm. Get it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it, it doesn't work though because you ever have like a cricket stuck in your house yeah you're saying i'm over here but it sounds like it's coming from every other direction you can you can never find the freaking thing well you got to be a cricket to understand cricket well, maybe i did a stand-up show once outside and i, I you know, jokes weren't working and there was crickets i would I, so i performed oh. for literal <laughs> crickets i thought you were gonna say i couldn't tell where the boo was coming from no 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 it was just depressing for everybody so um I, I, as years passed our numbers grew so, so the numbers being those who follow in their footsteps of being awakened to yeah. understand the path the, the so the truth behind those who dwell below. So I guess, yeah, like you kind of said, sorry to re-hit this mm -hmm. point, but the putting the tattoo, or maybe it's not tattoo, but putting this maze on their scalp is sort of an initiation. It seems them. like yeah, now you're part of the tribe that yeah. understands. Yeah, and I think that's a good lesson for all people with tattoos is put them on the inside of your skin. Yeah, okay? I'm it's easier to get jobs that I'm way. tired of looking at them. Yeah. All right, yeah, big deal. You got a butterfly because you ran a marathon. Yeah, we all, we've all struggled in our life. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. Turn your turn your butterfly into a pupae or a chrysalis. Yeah. So this is a it's a pretty important part where he, this oh, is where yeah, he sorry. meets the man who, who he said who put us to sleep in the first place. Mm -hmm. He had a yeah he encountered this guy. So this is a wild scene. There was a lot of just real this whole stage this whole sound setup the sound state whatever they did here mm -hmm. was pretty cool. It was all of a sudden we have a frozen bear fight. Whoa man and by the way this is why human beings rule the planet because we work together to stab bears from all sides and bears only have one bear with with two arms and that's so uh, sorry bears but we will kill you um yeah so he finds uh, stuff going on. but everything's frozen what's going on here we don't know and it turns out it's dr anthony hopkins having a good time chopping heads apart slicing yep. open their skulls so it's him basically trying to understand what's going on here he says i've been watching you mm -hmm. much as you've probably been watching what i've been doing because you're self-aware yeah. here and i'm seeing what you're doing i'm scalping i'm finding these clues that you've been leaving behind i'm right. finding these initiation things that you've been programming and drawing not programming but drawing onto the scalps here yeah. and but, it, yeah well yes totally and, and for some reason this is all just making sense to me now <laughs> because <laughs> nothing does when i watch it the uh i bet the bear scene was mid fight obviously i mean but apparently would you say anthony hopkins arrived on this shot and, and did his move to make them all like Probably, turn yeah. turn into to freeze i like this guy the arrow guy if you're gonna have a bear fight you always want to be the arrow guy yeah uh but i imagine it'd be a good time to freeze things to take like a postcard shot or something like that yeah like if you're yeah. a guest be like, oh could you freeze him like that real quick i just want to stand in there and get a picture <laughs> yeah honey put your put your head under the bear's paw while he's yeah. frozen um, but so then uh, presumably what's going on and I, I mean, duh, but, uh, all of the guys are fighting the bear and he's now just picking them off and checking out their heads, looking for, yeah. uh, mazes. Cause this mm -hmm. is like a, you know, he didn't intend for this to be a thing. That's some pretty in in interesting yeah. detail here. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Which is Ford, why he's been observing them. Yeah. And it's almost opportunistic in the, in his response. But first mm -hmm. he's curious. He's like, it didn't make you this way. So something, what's going on here? Why are you acting like this? Um, what's go, what's what's up with these things? So Dr. Ford is very intrigued by this behavior that's that's coming out. Um, not sure what the timeline is here. Do you have a sense for that? Well, we know that this is. I mean, based on the age of Dr. Ford here, we know that this man says that he first started going down the path that he's on when he saw the Deathbringer kill the Creator. Yeah. The Creator being Arnold, the Deathbringer being Dolores. Yes. So we know this has been going on for quite some time because at that time he was a young Dr. Ford yeah. and now he's an old Dr. Ford. Old Dr. Ford, yeah. I think these two lines are quite important here. Uh, it appears you've been watching me as well, which indicates that there's something to the maze. Like, they, obviously mm -hmm. Ford wouldn't be... Uh, well, I guess he'd still be intrigued if it was arbitrary, but obviously he's like, you've been watching me, which means you know something you weren't supposed to know. Right, and he and wants to know where the notion of the maze came from. Yes, and it, yeah, but uh, this is equally interesting, an idea that was meant to die, meaning that uh, something is unfinished that you're looking for, or, mm -hmm. or something was abandoned, maybe they finished it and they closed it up or something, mm -hmm. but it's, so um, the... Uh, a, a, a cachete, mm -hmm. a cachicote, machete, machete <laughs> is um, uh, sort of forces Dr. Ford to re examine a project that had been put on hold or whatever, canceled or just had mm -hmm. finished or something. But that's interesting. I think that's very intriguing. So, um, anyway, he kind of locks him in with his arm out. And I was thinking, as an actor, that must be a tough scene to shoot with your mm -hmm. arm pulled yeah. out like that. Um, you ever hold like a gallon of milk out and see how. Oh, yeah, it's not pleasant. Out? Yeah, it hurts. It hurts two seconds and I'm done. This is the death bringer. I like calling her the Deathbringer. Yeah, yeah. It's if you re if you rearrange the letters here, guys, it spells Bringer Death. Oh, That's amazing. Wow, that's some 
life. Put it on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> We've been sharing it with everyone. So he's like, "Why are you doing, man? You're letting everybody know." And then um, analysis. He goes, "Boom, boom." And here he speaks very clear, very, in, very perfect English because yep. he's in analysis mode. Yep, yep, uh, yep. And he gave himself. The, but this is cool. He's expressing his yeah. his uh, newfound will. He's basically a, a prophet almost. He's the the speaker of the truth. He's, yes, you know. Yeah, so he goes, so what's truth is that, Bernard? I just like that he says Bernard. Yeah. Um, but there isn't one world, but many, which was, uh, yeah, he's he's, uh, he's dialing into this whole mm -hmm. thing. What a, what a what a cool adventure. More than he even is aware of. <laughs> right. Yes, no kidding, yeah. And that we live in the wrong one. So um, Dr. Ford is like, oh, okay. Uh, and, the, you know, Dr. Ford's, I think in this moment, though, this is Dr. Ford figuring out a way to use it to his advantage. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they explained, um, to me, it, there's more to this. This is just the beginning of this relationship. And I think finally, we, this episode does not give us the answers to who the Ghost Nation is. No, no. Or at least what they're, what's well, clear they're working for Ford now, mm -hmm. we know that. Yeah. But we don't know exactly why they make the decisions they do. Um, right. From this moment on, Ford because taken, they don't explain yeah. that in this episode. No, Ford has definitely taken an interest in them as of this scene. Yeah. And this is not long before uh, Dolores kills Dr. Ford. We can tell based on his age. And the fact that he even says, he's like, when the Deathbringer comes for me, you'll know what to do. Yeah. Which means that he is predestined that Dolores kill him. Right. He knows Dolores is going to do that because he's setting up the events for that to happen. Yeah. Which goes into the whole lack of free will type thing all over again. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Now, there must be something to the consciousness becoming only being possible in the older robots. Does that seem like a, a statement that's not crazy? No, no I, I think it makes sense in that respect. Because he was old, he had the old, he was running DOS, you know, and Dolores was the original and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and, so. and it says, you've been a flower growing in the darkness. You've been right. something that's been flourishing out here, becoming something beautiful mm -hmm. underneath outside of my radar, where I was not watching, where yes. I did not notice. And as all everybody knows, darkness is the best thing for darkness is light, mm -hmm. right? And so um, this guy brings When the it. Death Bringer returns for me, a very important line, you will know. Right, right. So he's at this point, he's already planning this Dolores murder yes. in front of the party. Yeah, guy knows how to throw a party, doesn't he? And lead them to a new world. So is he supposed to hook up with Dolores or is he just supposed to like support from the uh, background you know like he's like the theater prop department or something no I'm really interested though to see in the from the earlier episodes which of the Lakota ghost nation Dolores has seen killing yeah it was it him I, I don't recall hmm okay yeah that's a good point yeah um, yeah it doesn't seem to be but um man this is weird what a crazy shot <laughs> this, looks, this looks like those those like medieval tableaus is that the right word uh, but we're like all the different yeah, yeah. guys having like oh, you know there's mm -hmm. like a baby on the ground or something yeah. there's like god up in the clouds and some devils having sna snacks mm -hmm. uh, you know some dude looking at a bottle of urine i went to the getty that's more like a mural probably yeah like but like those are ancient paintings where just yeah, a yeah. bunch of people uh, you know different a positions. fresca yeah. as they would say this woman is unclean and the other men are here to gather their okay anyway that's what like the side cards say. okay enough of that so what do you think the arm thing is what do you think is going on no, with I mean, it could be symbolic for how many animals or people he's killed. It mm -hmm. could be a tally of time. It could be anything. I don't really know. On the uh, Memphis Bell, you remember the famous plane from World War Two? The uh, no. When they shot down uh, my grandma, it's moved. They, they made shot move. down your grandma. They shot down my grandma. My grandma oh. um, lived near one of the original crew members of that. It's a, he was actually in documentaries. They made a movie mm -hmm. about the Memphis Bell. It was the first B something bomber in World War Two mm -hmm. to survive the twenty five missions. Mm -hmm. Those guys just died up there. They died in those flying, they call them flying fortresses. Anyway, mm -hmm. when they shot someone down, they would put a Nazi symbol, a swastika, under the window so that they counted how many Germans yeah. they shot down. And the guy that my, my grandma's neighbor shot down too, his huh. name was Bill, and he would fall asleep watching uh, golf at my grandma's house. Who wouldn't? He, he was a smaller guy, but he was old. You know, they, yeah. you know. Nice dude. We actually got to go. Okay, I can get into that on, on, on Memphis Bell, Professor. <laughs> Uh, I'm a little excited. James the Seltzer Water's kicking in. Sorry about that. Um, and then the Deathbringer returns. So now he's what? Back to uh, right after they said Deathbringer, they showed Dolores' grave here, right? So we, yeah. we know that it is her. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So he's back to this big. This is the. This is the, the prophecy, basically, when Ford said the Deathbringer would come for me. This is him coming upon the party in which yeah. Dr. Ford was killed by Dolores. Right. So this is a, this is a second massacre. Or, yes. This know. is the most recent one. This is one that set the events of season two into motion. Right. Right. So we have all kinds. Look at the red little lamp. That's kind of cool. It's um, pink. Yeah. Is that pink? Yeah, I guess it's kind of a yeah. mar maroony 
Red's maybe not the right. It's I mean, what's on his neck is red. Yeah, it's that's more, a, more pink. It's more of a richer, thicker, darker red. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, ooh, vulture. The vulture from the Westworld graphic. Yeah, and I said we hadn't seen a vulture, and they you, finally you showed it. it yeah. Now, do you think these guys are like flies when they land in your eyeball? Something's going on. <laughs> yeah, that would hurt. <laughs> Ow, my a vulture landed <laughs> on my eyeball. <laughs> you go to the emergency room. Like, mm. Well, the problems. You got a vulture on your eyeball. Uh, but in the graphic, uh, in uh, you know the channel, this dude is a robot vulture. So well, we know every creature in Westworld is a robot. Oh, well, the guy flying robot. So yes. Why don't, okay, that's awesome. We learned that in season one, where Felix is you know enamored by the robot bird. Isn't it also plausible though that there are robots in this environment in which this whole world takes? Or I mean, robots, vultures in this environment, and that they'd be attracted to this giant pile of dead bodies. Isn't that what vultures do? That's their thing. That's I mean, what they're it, famous for. It's possible. I mean, it's hard. It, it's one thing to populate a world with robotic creatures, but it's a whole other thing to keep, you know, organic creatures from flying naturally inhabiting. Flying organic creatures. But I think the, the, the narrative they're trying to create in Westworld is that everything in here is non-organic, inorganic. Okay. So I, I get where you're coming from from a logic standpoint, but I think from a narrative standpoint, they're trying to basically say that everything in here is artificial. Could be. Yeah. I um, Yeah, it's a... Perhaps uh, birds uh, birds are the drones of the... Yeah, I, I think while logical, I think it would be a losing argument to say maybe this one is real. Because in Westworld, you're supposed to believe that everything is not. Yeah. So the rabbits they kill and stuff are to turn into meat? That's I know. All. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense either, but you have to presume that, yes, they are because they do it day in and day out. The same rabbit out there, the same hunting, the same events transpiring... Yeah, boy, boy, it's really hard to get a um, rabbit imagine, population to sustain itself. Yeah, imagine how much nature. work that is for the techs. No, nothing. It's, you know, it's a heck of a lot of work. you got to unskin, reskin a rabbit <laughs> <laughs> to undeskin. <laughs> this rabbit thinks it's a leader. <laughs> yes. Quick, turn it down. Just scoop its meat out of the, the stomach of the host. And yeah. to re, you know, I'm sure it yeah, doesn't work like that. They but. are the symbol of reproduction. So uh, yeah. that's why Easter is about resurrection because rabbits lay eggs, which is also the symbol of resurrection. Okay. Uh, why do they show this guy? Is this like This looks like a... 80 like a like yeah you know guy from the i don't know something about the uh, rolling stones uh, um mm -hmm. all right so everybody's dead including dr ford oh sorry wrong way and uh there he is standing, sitting there so this is shortly after because the we he's can, not we can bloated say, and rotten yet right plus the uh corporate company hasn't showed up with the guys you know they do something about this this guy he's like the boss of the whole thing so yeah and we know it took about two weeks for that to happen anyway so. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i thought this is a good effective makeup shot it's just look his ears turning gross his eye looks really nasty it might just be him having a nap I think they, just him. they took this photo of anthony hopkins on his back deck yes <laughs> they could have <laughs> this is how i sleep but not um so there he is checking him out oh man this is crazy this is weird so uh everything's uh and then up walks. Yep, the prediction that I had from the very beginning is like, Emily has to come back. We cannot let the man in black die without Emily reconciling with him or seeing him at least one more time. Right. And it, she rolls into the camp. Not a huge shocker, but still a uh, it, it twist to the episode. I just want to say, this guy's got the side face thing, mm -hmm. right? And the horse has the sidelines. Yep. I wonder so, if that's related. So the whole thing with her is that she refused to allow her father to die in the park to go out in a blaze of glory. Right. Doesn't want that to happen. Right. So right. now she's coming in to reclaim him. Right. Yeah, and she's burdened by this old guy, and he look at him. Look at old dad. This yeah. is everybody's future. I still don't see him surviving this kind of wound, so I still think there's going to be something where, I mean, when he says, I want him to hurt, and she says, what I have planned for him is going to be far more mm -hmm. painful than that, which I think probably is to prolong his existence in a digital world, to yeah. get him in, to get to digitize his mind into the, a cradle environment. I just hope somehow he has to... Uh, have the memories of her banging dudes. I just feel like that's the worst thing that a father could go through. Yeah, I, 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 I would not bet money on that going that direction. But saying all sorts can, of weird stuff, you yeah, know. Yeah. Call me Raj, but you're a lady. You know that, that kind of thing. Dirty talk. What, what wasn't Raj the pejorative term? Well, I know, but it's the name of the park that they're in. He's blame Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan if you're mm -hmm. going to come at him for that one. Uh, so uh, anyway, yeah. So they get him up. The, the ghost station guys are kind of relieved. They're like, all right, okay, fine. You can have him. We don't, yeah. You know, whatever. We get rid of this dying. She's got to fill out the adoption papers. <laughs> yeah, she's got. She's got to put him in a car seat yeah. and strap him in. Uh, kind of does though. This is uh, the horse car seat. Look at him. Look, it's tough. To he get. shouldn't be long dead by now though. I mean, yeah, that, that's probably. a serious wound. Yeah. And, and be picking up and be thrown around and transported all over the place. Yeah. Any doctor would say you can't move him in this condition. Probably yes. This is the worst ambulance ride you could have yeah. here. Um, yeah. And riding a horse healthy is difficult, let alone with four gunshot wounds. Yeah. Um, and an angry daughter scowling at you. 
yeah. But in a way, though, she is. She does seem to seem care. Of, you know, I mean, she cares for him. So, mm -hmm. although she did threaten to hurt him more, but that could be a lie, though, just to tell the guy that let, yeah. me, let me have him. Um, but I, she knew that they were friendly because they captured her at one point, and she knows what their intentions are and what their true. their temperament is. Yeah, that's a good point. I still think I agree with you that his body is done for. Yeah. I, I don't think it, that they're gonna. It would be akin to the whole Game of Thrones thing with uh, Ned Stark. Arya Iron Guts Stark. Oh right, Where that Arya... that that still bothers me. Multiple stab wounds and giant yeah. gut wounds, and she just bounces back. Yeah, she is a Stark, James. Come on. Yes, they're made of stone. That's where they get them all. They grow them in the in the basement. Um, so anyway, he's got this uh, you know nice thing here. I was glad that this was a friendship, not just mm -hmm. some, <laughs> you know. Yep. Uh, so he's uh, off. He goes. He's he's done. He's got to move on to great. Is he telling her to get out of there? Is that what this this is? Which is his time to go. Basically, yeah. are we leaving or are you leaving? That's my question. I think he's probably he's he's already said that he's there to protect her, to watch mm -hmm. over her. So I'd be shocked if he just let her go off on her own. Right. Okay. All right. I like it. Uh, so then we cut to Maeve. Uh, mm -hmm. We got her body. Look, we got her circulatory system. That's her. That's one of those big leg femurs or uh, not leg femurs leg veins you know there's like a big one going down femoral there. artery femoral femur yeah femoral mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. that's what I, that's where i came from nice steady heartbeat everything's looking good um lipid her, profile her midichlorians are off the chart yeah and cholesterol 13 or call hemoglobin one white cell oh we're gonna need more than that you need at least three um all right oh god she's not in good shape that's not it so um we're hoping for good news james charlotte comes in <laughs> i'm only just seeing what's on the screen uh, so he's he's really he's intrigued by what he's discovered with this Maeve person, right? And he, he explains that they can uh, normally pass data. Then he explains that's the mesh yeah, network, like the handshaking type connection right. between the two to pass small bits of information for a narrative purpose between one another. Yeah. But she's doing that. She's using those same pathways, but she's using them to issue commands on with, a level that they have not even right. understood. Yet. So she she's able to right click on their icons and say run as administrator. Yes, and pretty much. Give them instructions to do whatever she tells them to on the fly with her thoughts. And as they're saying this, it dawns on us or it's revealed through the way they show it that she's actually doing that. In the moment. But this bear in mind, another important thing is that you mentioned Charlotte Hale oh, before I mean, playing with the, the, the arm on the table in the yes. prior episode, saying that, oh, she's just a board member and all that kind of stuff. What, what would she know? She's the one who looks at this from a behavioral standpoint and notices something that even the tech didn't notice. Mm -hmm. So her understanding of the inner workings of the park is a lot deeper than we've given her credit for. Good point. Fair point. Yep. That's uh, very right. She's, so she's how we found it. And I just misstated how we found it. We didn't mm -hmm. figure it out. She told it to us directly. Yeah. So yes, very good point. So maybe there is more to why she's doing it. I still think there's something to that hand. And, yeah. and as people pointed out, there was a thud or something. Mm -hmm. So it seems like she moved it. But I still say that doesn't, I mean, yeah, that's an interesting detail and certainly relevant. But it doesn't, there still remains the question is what was up with that hand thing. I think mm -hmm. we're going to find out more later. But if, Season yeah, four. Yeah, okay. But here's where she makes the revelation that she, that Maeve, even though she looks to be like in a comatose state mm -hmm. on the table, she is issuing commands. She is speaking. Right. So Maeve is just sending out orders like Sauron or something. Yeah, right and now. he's res and he's responding. What yeah. he's talking back to her because she's talking to him, where he says, "We will guard your daughter as our own. We will protect her. Find us." Okay, so find. So he's talking nation. directly to her because she is talking in his mind to him. Oh, and, and here's the heart. The heart the is the daughter. One. Take my heart when you go. Protect my daughter. She's her heart. The daughter is Maeve's heart. It could be the other crazy notion of this one is when you put something into cold storage mm -hmm. and you take its soul out you take its control ball out yeah could it be possible that they repurpose that control unit and that that host that was his love is mave whoa wait a minute what host which ho who the the girlfriend Kawana. the girlfriend kawana Oh, the, his original love was yes. Maeve? Do you think that's a possibility to well, use this phrase? Oh, for why she used it? That she would only know this phrase because in the past she was his girlfriend? Do you think that's what it's trying to say? That mm -hmm. it's leaving you off on a big yeah. <gasps> moment? It's possible. I mean, it's... I don't know. 
she doesn't look like how I mean, she doesn't she, look like an Indian. Of how, I mean, I know that's is it no, that but simple? They're I putting mean, a different mind in a different body. A, a oh, horse. it's not. I'm not saying that she she doesn't look a thing like Kahona. Yeah, Kah- no, Kahonis. 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 Yeah, you got six with serious Kahonis. <laughs> yes. God, I can't say that word. But she I mean, because obviously that body has been put into cold storage, and they yeah. took the mind out. Oh, right. The mind is not there. Right. So the mind is in who? Do are you saying? I'm saying that the mind eventually became Maeve. Mm. Possibly. Oh, okay. So she predated Maeve, maybe, mm-hmm. and that's why he looked after Maeve and the daughter possibly like it's, as a man it, maybe could be because that know. line right there is very telling yeah it is no it could be okay I'm, and I'm, there's a reason they put it in the the beginning of the episode because it's that important yes it starts with and ends with that line basically. and they put it and they made sure to make it in uh in uh, Lakota language with this thing mm-hmm. here like they that, this is obviously deliberate what an interesting choice isn't it yeah. So, what do you so, think that last line means? Is it that is she just saying it because she, you know? I, well, I could be completely wrong here because I don't have a good memory about what uh, what um, he this guy said to her at the very end here. <laughs> but I think that this is Maeve saying, "Protect my daughter. She is her heart." Because it could be that that's too. Been yeah. The core of Maeve's cor- her cornerstone is her her daughter and all that stuff. So she's still I don't know maybe. Um, It'd be pretty tragic if later on Maeve's daughter goes all this trouble to save her daughter, but her daughter prefers the other mommy. Mm-hmm. And they do like that puppy thing, like, come here, come here, come on, yep. come on, daughter, come over here. I yep. got an Xbox, I got a PlayStation. Which one do you want to live with? Um, so I don't know, but uh, that's the end, though. That's it. That we're we're here. So the cool reveal about Maeve. Actually, she's yep. running this whole thing this whole time. We thought she was down and out, but she's actually just sending out commands. Yep. So that's pretty good. Obviously, she's in a situation i'm not sure he's gonna get out of this one it doesn't we'll sound doesn't bode well for her that she's doing that though and that charlotte hale is standing there and she knows it she probably could just give the command to smash her head stop her from doing it could be yeah because you know i think what'll keep her alive is they're intrigued by the code that they're discovering but they certainly seem like they would try to stop what yeah or put her in a it. faraday cage or something like that where she can't you know <laughs> get her signals out like enemy of the state yeah starring history's greatest philosopher will smith mm-hmm. um yeah so i uh, i actually really enjoyed this episode i found it uh kind of a nice break from the timeline confusion like mm-hmm. i didn't feel like i was standing in one of those money boxes with all the wind flying, yeah, yeah. dollar bills flying around everywhere i could follow it <laughs> uh i was glad to finally get some clarity well yeah yeah some some backstory about the ghost nation yeah that's pretty interesting and especially uh at Ak- uh, who um you know seems to be a good guy glad we've got another another uh, fighter for good and good and not evil mm-hmm. out on the field that's good yeah did you have a good nice time yeah it was a pretty fun episode it, i mean i wouldn't say fun i'd say it's more of an art piece episode it was it was a, an emotional episode it was it wasn't a huge narrative episode i would right. say but it basically told a story that we hadn't we, I, I'd say it's a story that's important, but it's not one that we knew that we wanted to hear. It wasn't yeah. what I was expecting in this episode. But, be, but it was an important story because we'd been um, primed with so much mis- mystery surrounding the Ghost Nation. Yeah, if you had asked me what I think the predictions for this episode would have been, I would not have come up with an episode that's fully focused on the Ghost Nation and the backstory for them. I would never right. think that. I would think, okay, we're going to get more development for Dolores. We're going to find out more about Bernard and how they got to the Valley Beyond, what the yeah. whole drowned body thing was, and what Dr. Ford's next plans are and, w- and what his connection to the data inside Bernard's head would be. You know, all that kind of stuff still remains yet to be seen. Yeah, yeah. And as we approach further and closer and closer to the end of the season, you expect more of those answers to be given as opposed to an entire episode which is devoid of those kind of answers. Right, which I'm, I was kind of glad for that break. You know, yeah. we didn't have to we'll go through another one of those confusing interview sh- you were like oh which one's bernard is that dolores is that bernard which one's ooh? maybe mm-hmm. there's three of them maybe it's like those real sex episodes on hbo remember those you mm-hmm. never saw those sit around in groups and do weird mm-hmm. stuff um yeah it's uh i i appreciated this episode i <laughs> it was a pace i could understand sort of um but uh, any predictions for the end of the season and we have two more episodes no I'm, I'm gonna keep my predictions to myself until i say one more episode Okay, fair enough. All right, I, I I dig it. The seasons, the last two episodes have we've I felt like the show was on a slight decline, maybe just sort of that mid-season lull, maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. But the the last two have really brought it back. Uh, they did a good job, I'd say, in, mm-hmm. in that way. So, uh, Lisa Joy, Jonathan Nolan, you're back on my birthday invite list. Look out for Evite. Look out! Mm-hmm. I'm sending out Evites in August. Okay. Get ready. All right, James. Anything else you want to add? No, uh, I think that's pretty much it. It was it was not a 
super meaty episode, but it was an enjoyable one. It mm-hmm. was an important one. It was an emotional one, like I said before. But yeah. it was, you know, it it developed Maeve without Maeve having to say much. Good point. Did she really say anything the whole episode? I don't think she did. No, no, but we um, we saw the uh, the impact that she's had. Her family has not been as alone as we thought. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's some hope there. Yep. Right? And I hope? like the, the development of Lee Size more in this episode, too. He's a much more oh, yeah. likable character. Lee, Lee Size less. Mm-hmm. He doesn't go, ah. he goes, ooh. You know, he's, he's got a more joyful attitude. Yes. Yeah. I've been working on my attitude, James. Can you tell? He's been hanging out with Lisa Joy. I've been hanging out with Lisa Joy. Yep. And uh, enough of that Lisa Ling, mm-hmm. which doesn't. That doesn't make any sense. Um, all right, guys, that's where that's where we. This is the part where I say Twitter links, links, click, click on links, just fucking click, just click on everything, just fucking click it. <laughs> Patreon. Oh, we, we do a podcast. I think I said at the beginning. Look, go look look over there. Uh, I'm working on more stuff. I gotta get back to making new stumps, and I'm, I'm, I'm working on shit been busy and stuff. So uh, keep. But we do appreciate everybody's attention and comments. Let the we're gonna continue the conversation in the comments and on Twitter. Uh, I always love hearing from people. Twitter's probably the one, probably a better way to get to me, but uh, not that it really get get to me. <laughs> anyway, it's all out there. Oh, and Instagram, and MySpace, and Kazaa Light, and Netscape Navigator. So click, click, just keep clicking, and uh, we we but we do appreciate your your time. We hope we are able to um, somehow make the demeaning drudgery of your life. Uh, well, you're an hour and a half older now. I guess that's all we really did. So, James. What, are you looking up anything relevant, or are we saying goodbye? I mean, okay. Well, you looking up? No, I'm not calling you out. I'm just wondering if you had no, something I'm, to say. I'm just, I know, no, I know. No. I'm just wondering if you had something to say. Like no, 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 no. Okay, no, no. fair enough. All right, no, no problem. You're allowed to look at your phone. I just figured you were, okay, it's all good. Goodbye, everybody. I love you. Goodbye, James. Goodbye.